What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having a great day. I know I am. Today I've got a pretty funny story time for you guys about a time a uh, little entitled kid got roasted by his teacher because he was just bullying all the students. So, you know, the teacher stood up for everyone. It's a pretty good story, okay? Usually teachers are the bad guys here on the channel, but every now and then a glistening golden raindrop teacher falls through the cracks and gets highlighted here. Regardless, Regardless, it should be a pretty funny video, and uh, yeah, before we get into it, be sure to press the like button, or no joke, no scam, you'll get somebody pregnant, and they're not even gonna be hot. And that's right, that's a very serious threat, so press the like button, and without further ado, let's get into the video. <clears throat> it's, it's so good, it's not good. Nice rack and her ass Brazilian, just turned 21, but my bank's a million, swear I'm a little drunk, but it's a hell of a... Alright guys, the thing about today's story time is it's actually a subscriber story that was sent into my Instagram, which is at Scrubby, but regardless, as I said, it's a story about a super entitled spoiled kid getting 720 no-scoped. You know what? Actually, that that's not enough, alright? 1080 no-scoped by his teacher. Absolutely trick shot, final kill cam, last round, search and destroy, game endered. Obviously, anytime a story like this gets sent in, I love to talk about it, so uh, yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy and let's get into it. So, we all have had a kid in our class who, like, wants to be the class clown really, really bad. And sometimes people are really funny, they make the class laugh, everything goes by faster when they're having a good time. And sometimes, you know, sometimes they're just like a blaring full blast tuba in the middle of trying to concentrate. It's just the most annoying, obnoxious thing ever. And there was a kid in this particular class named Jared, and he was a full blast tuba kind of kid. His idea of something being funny was just like hurting people or bullying the quiet kids, which, you know, wasn't the right type of funny to entertain the class. Like, one time he grabbed the kid's hydro flask, like the giant heavy metal water bottles people have, and then slammed it into the owner's junk. First of all, I know every dude listening right now is just like cringing at the thought of how painful that had to be. And second of all, bro, that's just never funny. I don't care what your goal is, dude. If you use a hydro flask to smack somebody's fan family jewels, then you're a special kind of evil. I feel like that's just, uh, invading privacy, and it was his own hydro flask too, dude. Using their own property to do that is just next level. Beyond that, he would also pick on kids that were really just minding their own business. Like, there was this quiet girl in their class that would just do art in her notebook and leave everybody alone, like, wasn't disruptive, was never in anybody's business. And this dude would, like, hit her hands when she was drawing to mess up her lines and rip out the pages of her book sometimes. He thought it was just the funniest thing in the world, but like, in reality, he was just a grade-A mega douche to literally everybody who was in the class, and he thought he was hilarious. Like, he really thought he was the second coming of comedy Jesus. Anyways, one day Jared decided to go above and beyond and just take things too far, which honestly, it's surprising it took it long as it did for it to go that far. Usually kids like this definitely get themselves in a massive amount of trouble within like the first month or so of school but somehow Jared had just managed to annoy everybody in the class enough to like avoid getting in trouble with the teacher seriously. There wasn't really anything he had done that the teacher could get mad about yet. Yeah, he would pick on kids and whatnot, but he would always do it when the teacher wasn't looking or say it was an accident and they really couldn't prove it wasn't. Anyways, this particular day in class, they were doing one of those things that teachers love to do where they put all of your desk in a circle to discuss a book or whatever. That good old fashioned Socratic seminars some ancient Greek debate, you know? Everybody knows that ancient genius philosophers in, like, a 10th grade English class are basically the exact same thing, dude. I don't know about you, but when I was 15, I was definitely as smart as Socrates. Even now, dude, I'd be trying to read some philosophy. Nothing really makes sense. But isn't that, that the point, dude, that nothing makes sense? Maybe I'm a better philosopher than I ever thought I was. Regardless, they're all in this circle talking about this book or whatever, and there's a kid in the class that has happens to have four fingers on one of his hand, which, for those of you that can't do math, is one short of a normal hand. And that really doesn't matter. Like, genuinely, dude, it, it does not matter at all. It just so happened that he had a uh, hand with a missing finger. And honestly, that's not that big of a deal. Like, oh, you're missing a finger? That sucks. But it's not like you're less of a person, dude. I don't think that really affects anything whatsoever. However, for some reason, I guess the kid with four fingers and Jared ended up getting 
getting into a disagreement about something in the book and what it had meant, which honestly, it's surprising that either one of these kids managed to get passionate enough about an English assignment to get into an argument. Are you kidding me, dude? When I was like having to sit there and explain how I felt about a book I was assigned to read, I couldn't have cared less. If somebody disagreed with me, I would have been like, yeah, that's literally fine, whatever. Just as long as I get my points for engaging in this discussion, I will literally say whatever I have to. But these two end up getting into the discussion and the peaceful class debate erupts into like a roast off between these kids. And Jared obviously just takes a shot that's way too far and says something along the lines of, I've had to censor it a little bit, shut up you idiotic four-fingered freak. Which I mean, uh, whoa bro, okay, alright, you're literally in a debate about a book, there's no reason to escalate anything that hard, dude. Like, Jesus, man, really? The, all of this over the fact that you guys disagreed on your English assignment, you're gonna go after this dude's, like, missing finger that he can't control whatsoever? That's just cold. You just didn't really have to escalate anything that far. Talking about a book in school should always be at, like, a 2, but he ended up just taking it to a quick 17. So, at that point, things have gotten way out of control, and now the teacher has to get involved, because, uh, obviously that one was a little bit too far. You should never go after anyone for stuff that they can't really change about themselves, especially in this context of, oh, ha, I just disagree about your opinion on this stupid book assignment that neither one of us should care this much about. So the teacher tells Jared that he has to apologize because he took it way too far, which is a big duh statement, but Jared is like, no, I'm not gonna apologize, I didn't do anything wrong. Which, I mean, listen, I get being heated, but you gotta apologize after you say something like that, cause that's that's definitely wrong. Like, definitely, obviously wrong. That shouldn't even be a question mark about whether or not you should apologize after you say something like that. So now the teacher is getting annoyed and he doubles down and he's like, Jared, you need to apologize. And I guess at that point uh, in the year, Jared has just thought the teacher wasn't actually going to do anything. So he turns and starts roasting the teacher now instead to try to like make him look weak in front of the entire class and him look cool. So now he starts going going after the teacher and like roasting him, calling his wife ugly, all this stuff. And listen, bro, taking a shot at your teacher's wife is just uh, a little bit uncalled for, man. His day's already bad enough. He has to deal with kids all day. Especially you, Jared, with your loud mouth and your tuba-esque personality. No one likes a tuba, except people who play it, dude. Like, and even them. Eh, do they really like it? Honestly, jokes aside, the teacher at that point is like, Jared, that's enough. Shut up. And he goes, are you telling me to shut up? How about you shut up? You're the one who's pathetic teacher. Like, do you have any idea how much you're wasting your life here? None of us care about what you're teaching us. And the teacher is obviously getting more and more annoyed. And then Jared says something that makes the teacher just have to snap. He goes for his wife again and says something along the lines of, but it's okay, you'll get promoted because your boss is gonna sleep with your wife. Which, you know, uh, keep in mind that this all spiraled out of control from him attacking somebody for missing a finger, so he's definitely in the wrong. And the teacher at that point is like, that's enough, you know nothing about my family, blah 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 blah, kind of defends his wife for a bit and then says, I know you're probably just upset because you don't know who your dad is. And then Jared is like, are you kidding me? You told me you wouldn't mention that. I don't know what's going on, bro. Like, eh, their roasts are flying, Jared is screaming, he's roasted his dad. And then Jared is yelling at the teacher saying that he shouldn't have have said anything and the teacher responds again and he's like dude it's not my problem that your mom can't keep her legs closed and now the class is erupting the teacher is just bodying Jared and keep in mind nobody likes this dude because he's always picking on everybody and he's like oh my god and he storms out of the class all pissed off and the teacher once he leaves has this like smile on his face but comes back to reality and realizes he's just a teacher who like made fun of this kid's mom for being a hoe and listen I'm not not gonna say what the teacher did was appropriate, okay? I'm not saying that if I was a teacher, I would have done the same thing. I'm not a teacher, okay? Teachers shouldn't do that. That being said, it's funny, all right? Like, what, what do you want me to do? Jared's a brat. Sometimes you gotta get roasted, dude, all I'm saying. Maybe there would be a lot less kids like Jared if somebody roasted him every now and then. You know what I'm saying? But... 
That, that, that's just my opinion. Quick little hot take on the timeline. So after Jared leaves and the teacher is looking at the class, he's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. And the class is kind of like, no, that was sick, bro. Like, we're cool with it. Don't worry about it. And after a couple more minutes, they go back to the Socratic seminar. And that's when Jared comes back in with a dean. And he's like, you won't believe what he said to me. He embarrassed me in front of all my classmates. None of them are going to take me seriously now. Like, this is a joke. He insulted my mother. And the teacher is like, no, I didn't. He just is like, no, I, I didn't say that. And uh, the teacher is like, you must be lying, Jared. I don't know what you're talking about. I never said that. And he's like, you're kidding me. And uh, the dean looks at the class and she's like, did this happen? And is asking all the kids. And I guess all of the kids were like all so sick and tired of Jared's crap that they just didn't break, bro. Like nobody snitched on the teacher for roasting this dude. And Jared is freaking out because now he looks like he just made up the story to the dean. And she's like, Jared, it's okay. Like, I know you're embarrassed. If there's something going on with your grades and like you were trying to get out of class, there's better ways to do it than lie about the teacher. And he was just freaking out, dude. And yeah, I feel a little bad for him, but at the same time, I actually don't. Because this is funny. Karma comes at you fast, dude. Regardless, guys, I think that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I would really appreciate you taking a second to press that like button, comment down below, and subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new, like I said. If you want more content, I've been uploading the 12 Days of Scrubs really long videos if you're just looking for something to listen to in the background. And I do have a podcast called The Scuffed Cast. Link will be down below along with the link to the intro song. And if you're in the mood for merch, may I suggest the Christmas Karen sweater. Oh my goodness, it's just so swagtastic. And uh, yeah, other than that, follow me on Instagram at Scrubby, Twitter at Scrubby underscore 69. Hopefully I'll see you guys next time with another video. Don't get anyone pregnant if you do, make sure they're hot. And I'll see y'all later. I'm out. Peace. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And today I've got a subscriber story that was sent in to me about a cousin that they have that, uh, you know, is just a little bit insane. And as somebody that can relate to a crazy spoiled cousin, I decided that it was important to tell this story, especially because it ends up in this kid thinking he's literally a god. We all got some weird uh, relatives for sure, but this definitely took it to the next level. But before we get into it, be sure to press the like button or no joke, no scam. You're going to get hit by this cousin, dude. Next time he's doing his god powers and you don't want that, so uh, I would press the like button. Alright, so just to set the scene for y'all, it starts with this guy and his cousin named Eric. And Eric was a kid who was extremely spoiled by his parents. You know, so spoiled that like he had never mowed a lawn in his life. His fingers didn't even have wrinkles because he barely had to move them. He didn't own a car. His mom was literally his chauffeur. Like, she had a hat and everything and, like, loved the fact that she would drive him anywhere at any request. Was also the type of guy to, like, remind the teacher about his homework. And on top of just being, like, an insanely spoiled person, it didn't help that his mom was a Karen. So, you know, anytime there was any issues or whatever, she stepped in and went over the top to, like, fix it. And that was really the reason he was such a mess. You know, being spoiled is already bad enough, but when you have a mom that, like, basically basically makes everybody back down to you and walk all over or like, you know, walk, let you walk all over them. I don't know what I'm trying to say. You guys know what I mean. It tends to turn you into a little bit of a monster. Like, okay, one of the reasons that this kid was so spoiled is he thought that he was super smart. But the reality was he was pretty dumb. And anytime the teachers would give him low grades, he would get really upset about it. And his mom would go down to the school and like raise hell and basically force the teachers to, you know, maybe give him a special curve for hard work or, you know, something like that. But she wouldn't tell him that she was doing this. He was just getting straight A's and all these really hard classes that his friends were having a hard time with. So he was super confident to, you know, say stuff out loud and jump out and chase anything. And yeah, bless his heart, it wasn't really his fault that he wasn't somebody that should have never doubted anything he thought, you know. I don't think there's a single person on the planet that should never doubt anything that they think. I think everybody's had a thought and then been like, ah, that was, that was pretty stupid. Everyone. But this dude, Eric, literally thought that he was God's gift to Earth, you know. God put him here, he was like, ayo, what's up? This is Eric, he's the best thing ever. And that's what ended up leading to this whole situation. Now, you see, Eric was finally out of school. He was an adult now. He had turned 18, and obviously, because he was super, super smart, I'm doing air quotes here, he was doing his best to get rich as fast as humanly possible, you know? And I'm not gonna knock anybody for hustling, obviously. I think everybody wants to have, like, a big house and some nice cars. 
And I don't want to knock the hustle, and the reason this isn't about knocking his hustle is because he didn't really have any real hustle in him. You know, he had never had a job before, he didn't know how working really worked because his mom would just give him money. So his hustling made no sense. He was always having just like really stupid business ideas and trying to act like a successful hotshot while bumping from like pyramid scheme to pyramid scheme, you know, talking about how it's the next big thing. And it all came to a head at the 4th of July barbecue that these people had last year. Now, I would always say that it's probably great to go nuts at these things, you know? It's best to have your biggest mental breakdowns in front of a bunch of witnesses. But to defend Eric before we go further, his mom really did set him up in this one, alright? Like, it, she did not help the situation. So, when it came to family barbecues in this family, Eric usually wouldn't come. Like, he didn't really like the rest of the family. He thought he was better than everybody else there, and he didn't like eating with the poor people, you know? He, like, would call his cousins, idiots, stupid, poor, all that stuff. And they weren't his biggest fans either. You know, because he was always trying to boss them around. He was so used to his mom, like, bending over backwards to do literally anything for him that any time he asked for anything and anyone was like, no, I don't want to go quit this game of hide-and-seek to go get you a Coca-Cola, it was like World War III. Was always insulting people, so his relatives weren't necessarily a big fan of him, and he didn't like them either, so he didn't come to the family barbecues a lot. So, when they heard that he was coming to this 4th of July barbecue, they figured that at this point, like, he needed something, you know, or he had something to flex on them about how much better he was, like, those were usually the only reasons he ever came around. And honestly, at the time, they were thinking it was going to be another one of his pyramid schemes because he had been, like, wrapped up in a couple of those. But, uh, compared to what actually happened, they would be wishing for a pyramid scheme pitch. So everybody's sitting there. The, uh, the family that's coming with Eric is the last people to arrive. And the door opens, and his mom and dad walk in. And behind them comes a guy standing in a loincloth. Like, a straight-up Tarzan loincloth. And Eric is just standing there in a loincloth. Nothing else, no... No other clothing, not anything in his hand, no bag, just wearing a loincloth. And he walks in completely normal. Like, he doesn't walk in, you know, like anything's inconspicuous. He's not smiling. He's not doing anything like, yes, I'm wearing a loincloth. I can explain. He's just acting like nothing is wrong. And everybody, obviously, is turning their attention and just kind of staring at this because it's not every day that you see your cousin walk into a family reunion with a loincloth on. It's definitely just not something I would expect at the barbecue, you know? The meat's supposed to be on the grill. And the party that was, like, super loud a second ago, record scratch, er, without the record scratch, just goes dead silent and is just kind of like, what the hell? And he kind of just walks up to everybody and sits down on the couch and says nothing. He doesn't acknowledge anything about how weird this situation is at all. And then obviously everybody's staring at him and it gets like this awkward silence for a second. And then he gets up, walks to the middle of the living room and does like a little pirouette 360 thing. You know, imagine, imagine doing a little spin in Rocket League, like a little spin. And then he like strikes a pose, you know. You know how in like Power Rangers when they're summoning their Megazord they have to do like the wah! He does, like, one of those after his little 360 and, like, poses in his loincloth. And immediately someone's like, all right, dude, what's up with the loincloth? You know, they think this is a joke at this point because he's trying to be funny or whatever. They're like, all right, man, what's up with the loincloth? And when they ask him what's going on with the loincloth, he closes his eyes and he starts, like, quietly humming to himself, you know. Oh, my, my. And he slowly starts going up on one foot while he's humming, you know. My. Then he just stops, slowly lowers his foot back down and, like, opens his eyes and then says... I am God, like, just out of nowhere, bro, mad out of pocket, homie was just doing the one-footed, you put your right hand in, the hokey pokey, that's what I was looking for, and now he's apparently saying that he is God, ladies and gentlemen, that's right, ruler of the universe wears a loincloth to the 4th of July barbecue. So, at that point, everybody just starts, like, cracking up, bro. Nobody can manage to hold back the laughter. I'm sorry, dude. If somebody does, like, a 360 little dance number, a TikTok dance, and then tries to tell me that they're Jesus, like, I'm, I'm gonna giggle. Like, I can't help myself. Period. No matter what you're wearing. It also doesn't help if it's your cousin and they're in a loincloth, bro. Like, this just adds to the situation of just what is going on, man. Like, hey, what's up? Uh, uh, hey, I'm Eric. And everybody just has a massive fit of the giggles because how could they not? I'm sorry. There is literally no way on the planet that your family would not be laughing at you in this situation. And, you know, one person's giggling, then people are laughing at people laughing, and then someone, like, kind of does a reenactment. It just keeps going. They still think it's a joke at this point. They've been laughing for about a minute, and that's when the really awkward part suddenly sets in. Everyone in the room is cracking up hysterically, thinking this is the funniest thing ever. Except for Eric, bro. Eric does not even have a smile on his face, dude. This guy looks like he just got told that, you know, he's gonna have to get a prostate exam at the age of 18. He is upset. He is not excited in any way, shape, or form. If anything, he looks furious, dude. He looks like a phase Jarvis before he knocked out that dude at the boxing match. Just angry. 
and then his face like scowls into you know i'm assuming in his head he thought it was like a very angry looking face but it was more of like a constipated turtle you know just like mm. and everybody is still kind of giggling but it quiets down because they can tell that he's kind of pissed off and his mom gets up behind him and like puts his hand on his shoulders and tells him like go ahead honey you know they'll see soon enough it's okay and Eric is like, you doubt me, but I really am God, and starts talking about how he found out the other day that he has all of these superpowers. And he starts, like, listing off his superpowers, and basically just does something like this. I have laser eyes, I have wolverine claws, you know, I have super strength, I, I, you know, I'm a super genius, I can do anything, I can control the magic of multiple realms. He basically just, like, names every Avenger and then their superpower, and is like, Ayo, I have all of them. Homie just, like, uh, rolled all of them into one fruit roll-up, and instead of just... It, it, doing it the way you're supposed to, crumbled it into a fruit roll-up ball and just shoved it into his mouth. All of the superpowers at once, just mega OP. And obviously, you know, when you say something like that to your family members that thought this was a joke and, like, apparently you're now serious and your mom's supporting you, the first thing that they're gonna ask is, like, okay, well, can you prove it? You know, if you really have every superpower known to man, can you just kind of, like, do the thing where you show me that you have every superpower known to man? Which I don't think is unreasonable. I feel like that's a pretty fair request. If somebody came to me and was like, hey, I could fly, the first thing I would go is, like, okay, well, can I see you fly? And if they were like, ah, actually, no, you can't, then it, something's weird, bro. If I could fly, I'd be showing and basically anybody that wanted to watch the gameplay in the next video would just be me flying around like Superman I wouldn't be keeping it a secret if I had Wolverine claws I would open a sushi restaurant do you understand I live in Las Vegas the tourists would be lined up outside the door I'd be using this to make bands so the subscriber that sends this in is the person who speaks up and is kind of like okay well can you prove it you know can you show us something and he kind of gets shifty, his constipated face contorts into like a shy one, and he's like, oh, I, I don't know if he can, you know, I don't know if I can. So you can wear a line cloth, do a dance number, claim to be God, tell everyone you have the superpowers, but you can't show them. Like, you can't, you can't show me the superpower? You're literally showing everything else. You are in a loincloth in front of your family on the 4th of July, bro. There is no more secrets. And then everybody kind of starts backing him up, like, all right, well, I'm not going to believe you unless you show me that you have superpowers. Like, there's no way I'm just going to believe you. And he says, fine, fine, okay, I can show everyone, but, like, we all need to go outside. And he says, like, all need to go outside as if it would be some massive chore, you know? And I think I'm not there, but me and the cousin dude agreed that, like, he probably thought that the older people wouldn't want to get up or, like, people really didn't care that much and wouldn't want to move and go, like, outside and all together and watch him, you know, perform his superpowers. But obviously, in that situation, everybody is like, okay, yeah, let's go, and starts getting up, bro. Even their grandpa, which has trouble walking, is like, get me my cane! They all are like, yes, no matter what happens, all I know is that the 4th of July is complete with this. I don't really need fireworks, don't get me wrong, they're a good bonus, but if I get to see my cousin try to, like, show me he has superpowers, that's a, still a massive W in my book. So, everybody goes outside, and, you know, he kind of, like, well, says that they'll, he'll do it when they get out there. And they go outside, and they kind of group around him. So, he's kind of standing in the middle of everybody, and there's a U. Like, there's nothing behind him. There's the rest of the backyard, but the family's kind of, like, around him on a U in the patio, you know? So, he's in the middle. Imagine a street performance. Like, you know the dudes that do the human statue things? Like, that's kind of the vibe that it was looking like. And now that there's a crowd around him, the show starts, you know? A, a little beautiful show on the 4th of July. And in front of everybody, he just starts waving his hands around fr frantically, bro. Like, imagine, you know in the cartoons when somebody starts getting chased by bees and they're just swinging around their hands and it's like, ah, that's probably just gonna make him angrier. And that's basically what he's doing, just swinging around his arms. And after, like, you know, a couple seconds of swinging around his arms, he just starts, um, um, uh, and after 30 seconds of waving his arms, dude, I don't know if he's trying to signal a plane to land, I don't know if he was trying to, you know, wave down some help, if there was, like, a riptide, he was trying to signal to the lifeguard, who knows? All I know is that after 30 seconds, his eyes just swing open, and he just starts, like, shaking, but not, like, a, a seizure, like, someone being electrocuted, like, <laughs> but once again, not someone really being electrocuted, somebody that had, like, watched a cartoon of someone being electrocuted and went, ah, that's what it's actually like, and then just ran with it. And then he sprints over to the crowd and, like, lifts his arm above his head as high as he can and slams it down, and he slams it down with a with a pretty good grip to it you know and he just slaps and grabs onto his grandpa's bald head and just goes whap like the smack is just heard through the crowd bro and the grandpa goes ow because obviously he just got smacked by the wrath of his grandson eric in a loincloth for no reason on his bald head he doesn't know what's going on and everybody kind of was like 
<laughs> like doesn't really know what's going on and it goes silent and his hand is still on his head and no one's moving it's just like silent it's really really awkward because his hand is still on his head it, it, i don't i don't know man like imagine being in this situation and finally, out of the silence, his grandpa goes, why did you smack my head? You know, a little incredulous, but still wanting to know why his grandson had slapped him across his head. A five star was supposed to be on the back, nay, the forehead. And Eric goes, don't you feel that, grandpa? And he's like, what? All I feel is where you smacked my head. Like, I feel your hand. What am I supposed to feel? And he kind of starts shaking and he's like, the power, my power going through your veins. And his grandpa, just as brutal as possible, is like, no, I don't, and, like, moves his hand off of his head, you know. And when he does that, everybody starts laughing because, obviously, he thought his grandpa was going to be like, yeah, I feel it. No, dude, you can't actually give people powers. You don't have any powers. All you've been doing is weird interpretive dance moves that's making everyone uncomfortable. And, obviously, how are you not going to laugh at someone that just embarrasses themselves that bad? It's, like, one of the worst possible outcomes there could possibly be in this situation. But, you know, Eric is not having any of the haters. He starts getting angry at everybody and is like, I don't know why you guys think that, like, this isn't real. Obviously, it's real. Why would I commit to wearing this loincloth and learning all these moves if it wasn't real? That's still a great question. I'll tell you what. We get to the end of the video. We still don't really know the answer to that one. And finally, he's like, I'm gonna try it again. Can I try it again? Grandpa just doesn't want to support me. Let me try it again. And obviously, everybody's on board with letting him do it again. They're not really sure what they just witnessed. All they know is that it was entertaining, and they definitely want to see it again. And he starts saying that, like, the next one is the chosen one. He was testing them to see if they would want to see another show, because if he get makes them think that he's not actually got the ability to do it, and then he actually does, it, like, makes them believe it more. I don't know, man. He had some circular reasoning as to why his grandpa didn't feel the power but the next one was definitely gonna work so everyone's like okay go for it and he starts doing you know the whole booby shaking you know waving his arms in the air and this time when he does the whole she's your head smack thing he walks up to his mom who you know has babied him his entire life and he smacks her head except instead of yelling ow or like what's going on she doesn't really react if anything she kind of like leans into it a little bit but nobody really thinks that's what they see at the time then she's just acting like this is really normal like, oh, nothing to see here, guys. Everything's fine. You know, just keep it moving. But this is when things really get off the rails. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Somehow the dude wearing a loincloth in the backyard right now is not the craziest part. His mom just starts playing along with him, like acting like this is totally normal and is, is like just going with it. She goes, oh my god, I, I feel it. I feel the power. Oh, I, I feel it. I feel it. And they both stand up and they start like making wave noises with their mouth, like whoosh, whoosh. And they run like 10 feet apart in the yard and then just start kind of, you know, whooshing at each other. And then Eric just goes like, I have to defeat the demon within you to secure your power. And they start like having a force battle, bro, just yelling and stuff. But each time they're like making wave noises and like hand gesturing at each other, trying to have a force battle, dude. The family barbecue has become an exorcism on the 4th of July. They're like throwing energy at each other, bro. It's Dragon Ball. You know when they hami hami ha with like the... It's basically that, but there's... Two people in the backyard, one's an elderly middle-aged Karen, and one's your cousin in a loincloth, just pshu, whoosh, ka, pshu, ah, jibbe, pshu, pshu, pshu. Like, it's just the most embarrassing cringe you could possibly imagine, dude. And honestly, as it's going on, everybody that's there, the entire family, isn't even laughing because of just, like, how confused everyone is. Nobody knows what's going on. And to make it worse, like, um, her husband, his dad, like, had slinked out at this point. He had just gotten up and left. Like, he wanted nothing to do with this. He's like, my wife and my kid are so embarrassing. And when even your dad is like, I, I'm out now and does the peace sign, he's either going to get milk or, you know, he's really embarrassed to you. And after, like, five minutes of them just frantically running around the backyard, it finally ends when he, like, runs up to her and goes, like, Psha! and, like, pulls energy, I'm doing, and you know, air quotes, out of her chest, puts it on the ground, and then, like, jumps on it and punches the grass so hard that the dirt is, like, flying everywhere. And then, you know, they both get up and they're, like, <sighs> and walk over to the couches and, like, slump down on the patio, you know, where these outdoor couches are, and just start chugging water. They're both acting like they fought Godzilla, you know, that was the most intense battle of their life. And as for everybody that's watching, all the spectators, nobody knows what's going on, dude. Just pure confusion amongst everyone. Everyone is just speechless, like it's literally silent. So obviously this isn't like, you know, the hype and excitement that Eric expected. So 
He's just kind of sitting there, like, waiting, you know, staring everybody, trying to make eye contact with people to get them to comment on it, and they're just kind of avoiding it. But finally, you know, the hero the world needed decided to step up. The grandpa, out of the silence, just goes, what the hell was that? And obviously, once that gets said, everybody just loses it again. We know this family does not like to be laughed at, bro. Her and her son were gonna, they were gonna show us that they actually had the magic power and all the haters, you know. Everyone was gonna be rejecting it. And when Grandpa says that, it's over for him, dude. Everybody's like, come on, are you serious? What was that? And I don't know what they expected, dude. You can't just have, like, a fake energy force fight in front of, like, your family with your mom telling me that you're trying to kill her demons and expect me not to giggle at it a little bit, you know. No. And Eric starts screaming, and then, like, all of a sudden, his screams are being backed up by somebody. And at that point, his mom has joined in yelling at everyone for not supporting him. And at that point, dude, like, I don't know what they expected them to say. How are you even supposed to support that? Like, oh, yeah, I support you wearing loincloths and fighting demons. It's really gonna work out. Like, is there a stadium or something for that? How do you even... How, how do you want me to support them? Like, like, how? How? Either way, they're screaming. They're yelling all mad. You guys never support anything. Thing. It's like, dude, I don't I don't really know what they want you to do. Like, even then, let's say I believe the loin clock demons thing. How is this gonna be a job? Like, who's who's gonna pay for this? Who is the clientele? I don't understand. And when they ask these very obvious questions, them both very defensively are like, isn't it obvious? This is a gold mine. We're sitting on a gold mine. It's gonna be so easy to make money. And they're like, all right, well, if it's gonna be so easy to make money, please explain to us how this is so genius. And they start explaining that obviously he just has to do this demonstration in front of large crowds and people will be willing to pay him to show him how to use their powers yeah that's right you know that battle they had just witnessed was their business plan bro that was their marketing hey look we're gonna do this show in front of people and we're gonna make millions of dollars selling this program where you're gonna turn into a jedi knight what do you think obviously the family wasn't necessarily on board with that one you know i'm not gonna invest my money in magic Airbending sadly isn't real. Trust me, I wish it was, but you're just pretending to be the Avatar, bro. Trust me, I, I really wish being an airbender could be a job. And then he says that, like, everybody, you know, that's not here is fake and doesn't support him and being a freak. Keep in mind, he's the one who just had, like, a force fight with his mom in a loincloth and is now calling everyone else in the house a freak. Nothing against Tarzan, you know, you get what I'm saying. Like, hey, nothing wrong with the loincloth in certain situations, but if you just decide to pull up to that in a barbecue for no reason, yeah, that's kind of weird. And him and his mother at that point realize that the dad is gone and they dip pretty quick too. Like at that point, they're like, oh, we got to go. They get in the car and they leave pretty quick. And everybody is just kind of like, what is going on? Talking crap instantly. And the rest of the night was full of jokes, like making fun of it. But when the subscriber got home that night, they checked their Instagram and he had like posted that he was going to start performing these shows and, and doing power lessons for his friends on his Instagram. So, you know, it's a business. Maybe it'll take off. Will I'll be getting laughed at while he's on Oprah making millions. Maybe he'll help about Ellen, but I'm pretty confident he's not going anywhere, you know, I don't think the Avengers necessarily need someone that OP. But uh, anyways guys, that's gonna do it for the video, hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I would really appreciate you taking a quick second to press that like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the video. Actually, if you made it this far, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and commenting what your favorite superpower would be, just so like I know how many people got to the end, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, other than that, you can check out the podcast down below, it's called The Scuff cast i'll put a link to that it'll come back one day there's also a link to the merch store you guys can go ahead and check that out obviously you know i'm pretty biased but it's sick and you should definitely get it and uh yeah other than that use code scrubby at the g fuel checkout for a discount helps me out helps you out we're both winners so uh, everybody's happy and uh yeah other than that don't get anyone pregnant if you do make sure they're hot i'm gonna go learn how to use the force now and hopefully i'll see you guys next time i'm out peace What's going on guys, it's your boy Scrub here, back again with another video, hope you guys are having a great day, I know I am, and today I've got a story time for y'all about this spoiled kid I had to deal with in my neighborhood when I was younger that absolutely sucked, but before we get into it, be sure to press the like button, otherwise, no joke, no scam, your kid is gonna be insanely spoiled, and trust me, you don't want that, and without further ado, let's go. Nice rack and her ass Brazilian, just turned 21, but my bank's a million. Alright, so growing up, there was one kid in our neighborhood that was insanely spoiled and basically had, like, all the cool toys, all this cool stuff, but the one downside of him is he was insanely spoiled and just sucked to hang out with. And while at first everybody was kind of like, nah, this guy will be cool because he has all these awesome Nerf guns we can use, like, you know, he's fun to hang out with that way, 
inevitably we got to the point where like we literally could not hang out with this dude anymore because he was just insufferably spoiled obviously in our neighborhood nerf wars were pretty common like that was something that we would do relatively often and the biggest reason we just didn't really want to hang out with him anymore is because he was always cheating in our nerf wars dude like every time you would hit this guy with a dart he had some reasoning as to why he didn't feel it you know you would watch it hit him and he'd be like no i didn't get hit i didn't feel anything and so we finally just kind of banned him from being in our nerf wars and, you know, he would beg and beg and beg to play. And for some reason, one day he was begging to play and we kind of caved in. We were like, fine, you can play in the Nerf War again, but you can't cheat. Like, if you cheat at all, we're stopping the game and we're no longer playing with you. Like, if we see a dart hit you and you just decide not to say that you're out for some reason, you're going to be in trouble, dude, because we seriously will just end the game and, like, send you home. We'll go inside, like, whatever. We will not be involved with you. And he's like, fine, if that's how you guys want to be, then I guess that's the rules we can play by. But, like, I'm not trying to cheat. I never have. Sometimes I just don't feel the dart hit me. And we all kind of roll our eyes. We know he obviously just, like, wasn't calling himself out. But whatever. We start this nerf war. And obviously nerf guns, like, don't go very far. So you're relatively close to anyone anyways. But I was using this, like, sniper nerf gun thing. And I shoot my dart. And I watch it fly through the air and hit this dude right in the chest, dude. Like, I watch it and he's wearing a t-shirt and I know he knows it hit him because he looks down and then looks back up looks around to see where it came from and then just keeps playing you know what I mean so like I reload and I shoot another dart and this one hits him again and this time he looks down sees the dart on the ground looks up can't see where it came from and just keeps playing and at that point I'm like all right dude come on so I tell everybody that I got him twice and he's just, you know, not calling himself out. And I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty annoyed at this point, a little too annoyed, alright? But I was like a young kid in a Nerf war, it meant a lot to me then. So I go over to him and I'm like, bro, I got you twice, you're out. And he's like, no, no, it, nothing got me, nothing got me. And I say, dude, come on, like I was standing right there, I shot two darts at you, I watched you look down, look at the dart, and then keep going. And he's like, no, nothing got me, I didn't feel anything, I didn't feel anything. And I admit this was petty, but in that moment, I just reloaded, and I'm like literally right next to him and I shot him in the chest and I go oh did you feel that and obviously you know that wasn't the nicest thing I could I'd do but he, I was annoyed and he in response just picks up his nerf gun which is a longer one grabs the end of it like a baseball bat and hits me with it and at that point I take my nerf gun and I hit him with mine so now we're smacking each other with our nerf guns right and everybody's just kind of watching it happen and they all kind of rush over and we're still just swinging on each other with our nerf guns and we're not holding back like i'm not saying obviously a nerf gun can do a ton of damage but we are trying to hit each other as hard as we can with these nerf guns and so everybody comes and splits us up and at this point i've got some bruises like on my arm but whatever i had kind of hit him a few more times with this nerf gun that he hit me nobody wins that situation though we both looked like idiots. We both got smacked with a plastic nerf gun. Like, yes, I hit him more, but I still also got hit, so who cares? But everybody finally gets over to us, and they start splitting us up. And when they split us up, he just goes full rage mode. He's like, you guys accuse me of cheating in nerf wars, but I never cheat. Da-da-da-da-da. As I said, I sniped him twice. I watched it. I literally watched it, dude. But whatever. He's just raging. And they're holding him back. I've calmed down at this point. No one has to be holding me back. I'm like, all right, like, I'm not going to fight anymore. You guys, fine, fine. It's over. It's over. But, like, people have to be holding him back because he's just so mad. Not even at me anymore. He's just now pissed about, like, the nerf war. And so these people are holding him back, and I guess he just gets tired of the people, like, holding him back. And so he just clamps his teeth into the arm of somebody that's holding him back, like, really, really hard. And at that point, the person he bites screams and goes, Oh my god, you bit me! Because, you know, that's what you do when somebody bites you out of nowhere, and he kind of smacks him. And at that point, they have to separate those two, because the guy who got bit is now trying to fight the spoiled kid who ruined the nerf war, because obviously you kind of have to respond to someone literally trying to eat you. If someone starts going zombie mode on you, you kind of have to be like, Hey, don't do that, and stand up for yourself a little bit. So they break up another fight, and at that point, it's probably another 10 minutes of him freaking out before finally everyone's chill everyone calms down and at that point i think everybody's like all right we're just gonna go home we're done playing or like we're done playing with this kid but this guy who just bit someone was hitting me with his nerf gun you know like already causing all these problems looks at everybody after everything's calmed down and just goes all right guys let's play another round 
And I don't think anybody, like, really thought that he had just said what he said because somebody was like, wait, what do you mean? And he starts explaining that, like, all right, the first round was fun. Obviously, we had some issues, but, like, let's play another round. And everybody just kind of looks at each other with, like, this confusion. And they're like, you think that we're going to play another round? And he goes, yeah, why not? Like, that was just the first round of Nerf. Like, we can just keep going. And everybody is like, we're not playing with you anymore. And he's like, why? Why not? And they say, dude, we literally stopped playing with you because you were always cheating when we would play with you. We start playing with you again, you cheat the first chance you get, and then you fight everybody. Like, you know, you fight with one person, fine, but then we break up the first fight and you bite someone and start fighting another person. Like, no, dude, we're not gonna play with you anymore. And he starts saying that, like, this is ridiculous, they have no reason to want to play with them, and listen, whatever. As I said, I can get over, like, the, the nerf gun fight. I don't care, but I think the whole biting somebody as hard as you can and then fighting them when they were just trying to break up the first fight you got into is kind of like, yeah, I just don't want to hang out with you anymore. And I definitely wasn't interested in playing nerf with this dude anymore. Like, obviously, we were a lot longer. Now, I don't care either way, whatever this kid's up to now. But at the time, man, I was like, no, I'm not playing with you anymore. There's no reason for me to play with you if you're just going to cheat the entire time, dude. Like, nerf wars are sacred to me at this time in my life. You can't just be goofing off, not taking it seriously, because now I'm upset. Some dude's got a zombie mark on his arm, and so, you know, we're like, no, you can't play with us. And obviously, he doesn't necessarily like this answer, but there's not really much he can do, because we're not budging, you know? So, finally, he does the ultimate threat you can do when you're a little kid and somebody does something you don't like, right? He looks at us and he goes, fine, if you don't, I'm gonna tell my mom. And obviously this is just the biggest slap in the face you can possibly do when you're a little kid, dude. Threatening to tell your parents is just way too far, especially because we didn't do anything wrong. Like, what, are you gonna tell your mom that, you know, you bit us and fought us and can't play by the rules and nerf? Like, what the heck? Either way, though, you know, at that point, we're so mad that we're like, fine, go tell your mom. Like we said, we're like, wait, whatever, what are you gonna tell her? You're the one that did everything wrong. Obviously, we should have known that he's spoiled for a reason and his mom was just gonna be like, my baby baby because he goes away to go tell his mom and we think he's just not gonna come back out she's gonna say not to play with them anymore you know the stuff that like a normal parent would do but sure enough she ends up coming back with him to where we're playing nerf and is mad at us like saying that we were being too mean for no reason and we should be able to play with her son and if we're gonna exclude him then she might just tell our parents that we're being bullies and, you know, the, her son has all these Nerf guns, and we should want to play with them because he has all these Nerf guns. And it's obvious that, like, she really wants us to play with her son, but she doesn't know what's going on. Like, she must not know why we're not playing with him, right? So, whatever. We kind of try to ignore her for a while, but she's just not leaving. Like, even after a round of Nerf guns, she's still sitting here telling us that, like, we need to play with her son. We need to play with her son. And at that point, one of us was pretty fed up. It wasn't me. It wasn't the kid who got bit. But one of the people goes, no we're not gonna play with him because he's been fighting everyone and he bit him and so you know they start to tell her in detail about like what happened and she's just denying it the entire time she's like no he would never do that he would never do that they're making it up and at that point everyone's like no we watched it like we watched him fight him and then bite him Yes, fight and bite do rhyme, but your son did both. Like, we literally watched him do it. And at that point, she's still kind of in denial, but she's like, well, did you ever consider what they did to, like, fight and bite? You know, what did they do to him to make him get that mad? Because obviously, at that point, it's just our fault. And then, out of nowhere, she points at me and the kid who got bit, and she's like, I think you guys should go away, if anything. If you guys are causing problems and being the reason that, you know, my son can't play Nerf War, then you guys need to go away. Because you guys have been playing for a while. You guys got a turn, so if you guys can't play together, then it's his turn now. And me and the kid who got bit are like, wait a second, hold up, hold up, hold up. You know, like, I, I'm not leaving because your son tried to fight me. Like, what are you talking about? That's not even how it works. We're not taking turns. And thankfully, the rest of the group is like, yeah, no, they're our friends. Like, we're not going to kick them out because you want us to play with him. If he can't get along with the people that are playing, then, like, that's not our problem. He's more than welcome to go play Nerf with other people. We just don't want to play with them. And she just is not having it. She's like, no, you're going to play with him. And the more she digs in and is like, you are going to, the more we're like, no, we're not. You know, it's just having the opposite effect. In her mind, obviously, we're going to cave because she's a parent, but we're just digging in our heels. And so she's like, all right, well, I'm just going to sit here and watch then. I'll sit here and watch until you guys play with him. 
And if you guys tried to exclude him, then I just won't let you play. So how about you just get to playing and like my son's going to play and I'll watch. And I would have been down to keep playing and let her watch, right? But like some of the other kids are like, no, we're not playing. At that point, I think it was more about just proving a point to his mom than like actually being mad at the kid because I think we were all more annoyed with his mom than we were the person, right? And I'm not even kidding when I say we didn't play. Like we just sat there talking, we weren't playing, and she's just staring at us saying over and over again like, you guys should play, but if you play, he has to play. And we thought we were going to wait her out, right? Like, like if we wait long enough, obviously this lady's got to have something to do where she's going to leave and we can just get back to playing our Nerf War. But she's not budging, dude. She's sitting there insisting that we play with her son in this Nerf War. And so after like 10 minutes of stalling, doing everything we can to try to get her to leave, you know, she's not leaving. So we just decide to go home. So like one by one, we all are just like, all right, well, I'm going to go home. And everyone leaves. Like, literally everybody was at the point where they were going to go home before they played in this situation. Like, that's how much nobody wanted to do it. It's not like we were all just being ridiculous. Everyone was just mad uncomfortable. So, a couple people had stayed, but basically everyone left, and she didn't leave. Even after people started leaving, she's like, well, whoever stays, like, you guys are going to play, so I'll just wait. And at that point, it had just killed the vibe. Nobody wanted to play anymore. It's not the same when your parents are standing there forcing you to do it. Like, you know, when it's just naturally happening and everyone's having a good time, it's one thing. But if your parents are standing there just staring at you like, have fun, have fun, have fun. It suddenly it just becomes a lot more hard to have any fun, especially when the person that they're telling you to have fun with sucks and is going to bite you. I love me a Nerf War, but I don't want to run the risk of getting like whatever disease your kid has. Dude, he probably doesn't brush his teeth. For all I know, he could have a colony of undiscovered bacteria growing on his molars, and apparently he has an aptitude for biting people after a Nerf War. If you think I want to put myself in that situation, you are sorely mistaken. I don't care how spoiled or incredible you think your kid is, I'm not getting bit to hang out with them. It's nothing personal, it's just reality. And I just wouldn't want to play with him if you weren't standing here either, but the fact that you're his mom sitting here watching it makes it even weirder, and I want to play even less. Because, you know, in most situations, if your parents are sitting there watching you, then, like, you're probably on your best behavior, right? You don't want to mess up. You don't want to make them disappointed. But if you go and tell your mom, I bit a kid and fought one kid, will you come make them play with me? And they come and sit with you and are insistent that you're allowed to play, I think that you're probably going to act even worse now. Like, that was what I was thinking, dude. If we try to hang out with this dude now with his mom sitting here, like, defending literally everything that happens to him, what, is his mom gonna start arguing with us about whether or not our nerf darts hit him? Like, now not only do I have to worry about you cheating in a nerf war, but on top of that, like, now your mom's gonna be involved yelling at me for sniping you with a nerf gun. So we all go home, he ruins it that day, and from then on, we just literally do not invite him to have nerf wars ever again. In fact, every time we would try to have a Nerf War in the street, his mom would come out and try to like force us to let him play. So we would just started doing it in someone's backyard because he would just cheat, dude. Like it was just not fun to play with and his mom would insist on watching and we're like, we don't want to hang out with your mom watching us play Nerf, dude. Like, no. And here's the thing. If he would have been embarrassed by it and been like, mom, stop, I think we would have chilled out a lot. But he was like, no, my mom's going to watch because you guys say that I'm cheating in Nerf and I'm not. Like, he wanted his mom there, bro. I think towards the end, in all honesty, when she would come out, she seemed annoyed. Like, she didn't want to be doing this, but he was the one like, no, come with me and make them play Nerf with me. But anyways, as I said, we started doing it in someone's backyard, and this guy did not like that. And I guess to cope with the fact that he couldn't play Nerf with us anymore, his mom bought him an airsoft gun, which was a horrible idea. And he would sit at the gate of this person's backyard and try to, like, snipe us with airsoft pellets. And we were really young, you know? Like, now if someone shoots me with an airsoft, gun ow that sucks but this is still way back when when like that hurt really bad so he would just kind of take shots through the gate there was cracks in it and try to like hit people while we were playing with nerf guns and obviously when you're playing stupid games sometimes you win stupid prizes and so when you're trying to shoot people with an airsoft gun occasionally and uh, eventually you're going to hit someone with that airsoft gun right and so one day we're playing Nerf, and one of the older kids that we were playing with gets hit, and he goes, Ow, dude, like, what was that? What was that? And he looks at the gate, and he sees this kid cheering about the fact that he just hit him with the airsoft pellet, right? 
So he runs over there and hops the gate a lot faster than I think this kid expected because he was trying to run, but he catches up with him and they just start fighting. And he's like, dude, you're so weird. You're watching us play through the gate and you're like shooting at us with an airsoft gun. Are you serious? And so they're fighting and his mom runs up and then the person whose house we're at, their parents come outside. And she is mad at us once again, being like, well, you know, he wouldn't be shooting airsoft guns at you if you guys would let him play with you. So this is kind of on you. You guys shouldn't be mad because you're the reason this happened. Like, wait, what you want? You're mad at us because we didn't want to play with your kid because you're crazy, right? And so he's allowed to sit on their property and shoot at us with airsoft guns. We were just supposed to let it slide if somebody got, like, hit with an airsoft gun from this kid we weren't even playing with. We were supposed to just be like, ah, oh, that's on us for not wanting to play Nerf with him. And at that point, like I said, the other parents were outside, and when they started hearing what this lady were saying, they're like, whoa, 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 that's not gonna fly. So they told her and her, their kid, they're like, get out of here, this is our property, you can't be standing out here on the side gate watching our kids play in the backyard and shooting at them with airsoft guns. And they went and told the rest of the parents, and the parents at that point were like, alright, yeah, we gotta talk to this lady, our kids, like, can't play in the front yard anymore, she's yelling at them, her kid is, like, shooting them with airsoft pellets while they're not aware he's even there because he's creepily watching them play in the backyard the entire situation is bad so our parents ended up going over there and we weren't there for like this situation but they go over to his house to confront his mom and apparently when they confront her and are like you can't keep doing this she's like no your guys as kids are horrible they all of this started because they were bullying him for not wanting to play nerf and obviously that's not what happened, dude. Like, we played with every kid in the neighborhood unless you cheated at Nerf Wars. That was like the one thing you could do to not be cool to us anymore. And we had played with him. We gave him a second chance and then he bit us. Like, what do you want us to do? So obviously they're like, that's not what happened. But she's insistent this is all our fault. And at that point, our parents are like, look, just don't hang out with him. If he's around, just come home. Like, I just don't want to deal with this anymore. And at that point, when our parents are on our side, we're like, all right, good. And so we were still playing in that dude's backyard. And for some reason, even after all this went down, he tried to come back again with his airsoft gun and like snipe at us while we were in their backyard. And I guess his parents were aware he might try to do this. So they had set up like a, a little like a security camera pointing that way. And when he had come up to try to spy on us and shoot us with his airsoft gun to like get back at us for, you know, getting him in trouble and embarrassing his mom or whatever, which we didn't do. You and your mom embarrassed yourself. We had nothing to do with this. His dad found out and like went up on the balcony and started spraying him with a hose. And so he's like, stop spraying me with the hose. And he's like, get off my property. And every time he would come try to mess with us while we were playing Nerf in the backyard, he would spray him with the hose. And that was like our signal to be careful, you know, like, oh, the hose is going. He's here. Like, get ready. He might shoot at us with the airsoft gun. That kid was just the, the, the worst, though. I will say it's not his fault. He was a kid. Like, he did suck when we were kids. Don't get it wrong. We didn't like each other. But in retrospect, now that I'm older, I think most of that was the parents. Like, if you're backing up your kid in every scenario, making them think they're never wrong, that's not a good thing, because sometimes they're going to be wrong. Anyways, though, he did end up moving, like, six months later after all of this went down. And after he moved, I don't know where he moved. He didn't go to our school anymore, and I have no clue where he is now. So for all I know, bro, he's like Jack Dorsey. He made Twitter. He's a billionaire now. I guess I have no clue. Maybe it did work out for him. Regardless, that's why we did not want to play Nerf with him, bro, because he would bite you, he would cheat, and most importantly, his mom would, like, come out and, and just kind of stalk you for a while, and nobody wants that to happen, dude. Nobody. Anyways, guys, I know this was a longer video, but hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I would appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought, and subscribe if you're new and turn on those notifications. If you don't know what to comment, I would really appreciate you commenting the word nerf down below. It helps my video do better. Other than that, if you really want to help me out additionally, you can check out the intro song linked down below or my podcast, The Scuffed Cast, which you can also find in the description. And if you're in the market for G Fuel, the best energy drink for gamers by gamers, if you use code SCRUBBY at the checkout, you'll get a discount and it helps me out. Everybody's a winner. And last but certainly not least, I did go ahead and put some of my story times on Spotify, so if you want to listen to those on there, that link will be at the top of the description. Feel free to go do it. And uh, yeah, on that note, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot, and hopefully I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here, back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a story time for you guys that I think you're going to enjoy about a spoiled kid getting shut down because he just, like, expected everybody to do his homework work for him.
It's even weirder when you figure out the kid was in college, but uh, yeah, that's the story time we got today. It should be enjoyable, but before we get into it, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam, you're going to end up with this kid in your group project, and trust me, that's going to be no fun. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm getting quiet now. Laying low when you reach zone. Alright guys, so the person who sent this in said that this story took place in their freshman year of college. They ended up being in a class with one of their dorm mates, which is probably like worst case scenario, dude. I'm not saying my dorm mates were the absolute worst, right? A couple of them were really cool, but I definitely had some that like if I had to see other than already living with them, I probably would have lost my mind. And it just so happened that the dorm mate he shared a class with happened to be one of the kids who like had really rich parents and expected everything to just be handed to him on a silver platter. And regardless, they ended up getting a project in this class that was a group project, and it was him, the kid he shared a dorm with, and some other kids that were in a group having to work together. So naturally, since two of them already lived together, that's just like where they went to work on the project, because it's easier when two people are just already there. So they go over there and they start talking, and pretty quickly the spoiled kid is like, all right, you guys got this so I'm gonna go out with my girlfriend when I come back you know we'll just wrap it up and everybody in the group project kind of looks at him confused and is like what are you talking about I guess in his mind he thought that somehow because he was providing the space for the group to work in his own words it meant that he wouldn't have had to stay there and actually do any work with the group project he compared it to like being a landlord. I'm using his own explanation. He said that because they were using his room to work, it just made sense that he wouldn't have to be present because he wasn't charging them for the time. Somewhere along this line, bro, this kid had been told that his time was so valuable that he could like charge rent for people to be in his presence, dude, to use his room. Obviously, the other two guys don't really know what to say because they don't know him at all, and his roommate is kind of like, yeah, but that's not how it works. Under that logic, wouldn't I not need to do any work either? Which is technically the truth. It's both of their rooms, so, you know, if that's the way it's going to work, the people who live there don't have to do work, then neither of them do. And the spoiled kid is like, yeah, but the difference is, like, you're supposed to do stuff for me because everybody knows that, like, you kind of need me to be your friend. And obviously, that really insulted the subscriber. He's like, what are you talking about? Well, apparently, this rich kid had convinced himself that everybody was just obsessed with him. They all knew how much money his parents had, and so he was just kind of aware of the fact that they were going to do the group project for him if it meant that he was going to be their friend. Which, listen, man, uh, kind of not the case, like, especially not in a college scenario whatever I'm sure in high school people would do your homework to be friends with a popular kid or whatever I still think that's insanely stupid you shouldn't do that it's not worth it but like in college bro no one's gonna do all your work to be your friend obviously the subscriber was like yeah that's not the case we're not even really friends we're more like just dorm mates and the spoiled kid literally is like, no, dude, trust me, everybody wants to be my friend. He literally says that, which, like, listen, man, I'm sorry, nobody's cool to the point where everybody wants to be your friend. And even then, you're not allowed to say that about yourself. Like, calling yourself so cool that everyone wants to be your friend is like your mom calling you handsome. It's just kind of technically required. Like, let's be honest, if you're training for, or you're reasoning, I guess not training, for why you're attractive as your mom said so, I've got bad news for you, bro. They have to say that. Oh, my son's the most handsome. It just is what it is. That's the equivalent of this, dude. Like, oh, everyone wants to be my friend because I'm awesome. Yeah, okay, buddy. Not everybody wants to be your friend, especially when you suck like that. At that point, the people in the group project are also fed up, and they're like, we're not going to do your work for you. No, you have to stay and help with the project. And he's kind of like, no, that's not how this is going to go down. If that's how you guys are going to be, then I don't want you using my room for the project. Well, the doormate is like, all right, well, we can use my side of the room. So they move over three feet, and they're like, you can't leave or you're not getting on the project. And he says, and I quote, you guys don't have the balls to take my name off the project because you guys need me to be your friend. And he gets up and says he's going to go hang out with his girlfriend well at that point I don't think he realized that like yeah bro this is college you're working with adults it's not like a bunch of 15 year olds that are intimidated by the fact that you're popular anymore right so they just did the work agreed to not meet in this dorm room anymore and then all emailed the teacher separately explaining what happened they made sure their stories like made sense and were like for this reason we would like him to be removed from the project and so the next day they wake up and his dorm mates like oh thanks for all the work you guys did it was awesome 
and he straight up tells the dude yeah no but we're taking you off the project like letting you know now we already emailed the teacher so when we go in today don't be surprised when she like moves you away from us and makes you do your own thing and he starts getting pissed saying it was so unfair and rude of them to do that and you know he was never going to be their friend now and once again the subscriber looks at him and is like dude i don't care about being your friend like i don't know why you keep saying that like some big threat you being friends with me literally does not change the fact that i'm not going to do your work for you just because you're like rich dude i don't care how rich your parents are i'm not doing everything for you and sure enough, he kind of got really pissed off. They go to class, though, and the rich kid was kind of hoping nothing was going to happen. But the teacher kind of says that he's going to have to do his own project, and when he does that, like the teacher tells him that, his reaction is, do you have any idea who my dad is and how much money he gives to this school? Like, do you have any idea how much of a mistake it is to move me off this project? I wouldn't do that if I were you. And at that point, the teacher, the professor, I guess I should say, is like, oh, are you really going to try to name drop your dad right now because you left everyone to do the work on your group project? And he was like, yeah, because that's how it is. Like, the fact that my dad gives all this money to the school means that I get treated differently. And the teacher looks at him and goes, yeah, that might have been the case a while ago, but I got tenure. Your dad can't get me fired. You're doing your project on your own. And uh, for those of you that don't know yet, college professors, once they get tenure, it's like really hard to fire them, even if you donate a lot to the school, right? So the kid kind of is sitting there in shock, probably because he's never been told no before. And then he turns to the guys that like kicked him out the project and he starts saying how they were really bad friends for doing that to him and they kind of point out that like yeah but you do realize you were equally a bad friend because you were gonna leave us to do all the work and you didn't feel bad about it like you were literally going to leave us to do everything and go hang out with your girlfriend and he's like yeah but you know i really wanted to go do that so you guys should have just done the project it was really like no one had ever told this kid no before like you know what most people have to do bro they do their homework and then they go hang out with their girlfriend like that just is what it is you can't always expect your friends to do like all of your homework for you in every situation you know especially when they're not your friends they're just random dudes that were in your gr like group at a school dude you guys definitely need stuff from me so you owe me yeah but if they've never asked for anything or needed anything from you then they don't owe you like not everybody just automatically owes you anyways they get into a little argument the professor shuts that down quick and says that if he's gonna keep causing problems then like he needs to leave so he says he's gonna go down to the office right now and get this straightened out and blah 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 so he goes and he swears he's gonna be back with some reprimanding for the professor so he goes to the office to complain and try to get his class changed or drop it or whatever in college classes really aren't cheap you know i think basically everybody knows that that it can cost like a small liver to go to college obviously this dude's parents were rich if they were donating money to the school but he ended up just having to drop the class which messed up his like schedule to graduate and whatnot because he was so embarrassed that he refused to go back in there and talk to the teacher obviously he told everybody it was because the teacher was like discriminating against him because of his last name and yada 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 that just was not the case in the slightest so whatever people kind of figured it out pretty quick and uh yeah he basically wasted like 700 dollars on this class that he had to drop because it was too late to get his money back and he literally had to stay for an extra semester to graduate because the way that college classes are scheduled here if you mess up once like if you drop it too late and can't replace it then you're just sol there's no way to get those credits back so all of that because he just expected people to do his homework i bet you that's not working out for him too well and i'm gonna venture to say that he eventually had to learn to just do his own work anyways guys that's gonna do it for the video hopefully you enjoyed if you did i'd really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button let me know in the comment section down below what you thought if you're new subscribe and turn on those notifications if you really want to help out the channel, you can check out the intro song. A link to it will be down below. My podcast, The Scuffed Cast, can also be found in the description. And if you really want to help out, you can use code SCRUBBY at the G Fuel checkout. That gets you G Fuel at a discount, and it helps me out, so everyone's a winner. And if you really, really want to support me, then uh, go ahead and take a look at your screen now. On screen, you'll see the coolest merch to ever exist in the history of the planet, which can also be yours by taking a trip down to the description and clicking the Teespring link and buying it. But uh, yeah, on that note, guys, I think that's everything I got to plug. I really, really appreciate all your support. Don't get anyone pregnant if you do make sure they're hot. And I'm out. Peace. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And today I've got a story time for y'all that I think you're going to enjoy about this spoiled kid that got destroyed by his crush. 
Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. This was a subscriber story that was sent in, but nonetheless, it had the embarrassment that should need to be a story time. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But before we get into it, no joke, no scam whatsoever, be sure to press the like button. That's right, switch a root on it. Otherwise, guys, you will get rejected this hard, and trust me, you don't want that. So be sure to press the like button, and uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> Nice rack and her ass Brazilian just turned 21, but my bank's a million. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as y'all know, every now and then you run into somebody that uh, is a little bit spoiled, you know, whether it's their parents doing everything for them, them just taking the credit card, buying it themselves. Some people are very, very entitled and think they just own the planet. And this story is about one of those people just having to interact with them. The subscriber who sent this in, I'm going to name Tony for the purpose of today's video. And Tony was just a normal dude, you know, nothing too crazy. Not like he was, you know, a, a crazy athlete or anything. It's not like he's a multi-millionaire stock trader. He was just a dude. And Tony was just the type of guy where, you know, he would show up to school, hang out with his friends, but during class he would just be quiet. And for some reason, whenever you're a quiet person like Tony, he says that, like, people really just open up to you for some reason, even if they don't know you, they don't know your opinions on anything. Like, if you're just quiet, people will just keep talking. And for whatever reason, Tony sat next to a kid who I'm gonna name, uh, you know what, we'll name him Chad, because Chad's the name that's pretty fitting of him. And Chad would basically just like talk to Tony all day Tony wouldn't say much because he was a quiet kid all about how you know his parents were just trying to ruin his life because this summer he wanted to go to Cabo but they were just gonna make him spend the summer on his parents ranch instead like that type of stuff you know and because Tony would be quiet I think he thought they were homies so he was just constantly complaining about things and when I say that Chad was spoiled I mean he was like crazy spoiled Obviously, it's one thing to, like, get mad at your parents for not doing what you want to do, which is still kind of ridiculous, but even beyond that, if your parents are like, eh, we can't go to Mexico for a month, so instead, we're going to go to the ranch that we own all summer. That seems like a pretty fair trade-off, all things considered. But beyond that, some of the stuff that he would complain about was that his cleaning lady that he had to clean his room and his bathroom would clean stuff too well. And he didn't like when she would put stuff away because then he wouldn't know where it was because he never bothered to learn where it is. And he seriously was considering if he should talk to his parents about firing her because she was putting his stuff away too much. Like, that was the stuff he was complaining about. And what's wild is, like, you know, for some reason, I feel like the most surprising thing about spoiled kids is that their parents don't really say no to them. Like, you would think most parents in that situation would go, you're on crack. We pay the cleaning lady to clean up. The reason your stuff isn't where you put it is because you don't put it away. Your room is a mess. So, no, we're not going to fire the lady who does her job. But whenever he would complain about something like this or have a situation, you know, where he would tell his parents to do something, they would just do it. No questions asked, you know, it didn't matter how dumb it was or whether or not it was logical. It was like they were afraid to tell their baby boy no. Anyways, one day he shows up in class and he starts telling Tony that he has a crush and it's someone in the class, you know, and he kind of figures it's going to be someone that maybe is equally rambunctious or annoying. Not in a mean way, it's just what he would assume. But Chad says that he has a crush on this other quiet girl in the class. And, you know, it just so happened that Tony was friends with the girl that he said that he had a crush on and he knew for a fact that she was 100% not interested. And he knew that because Chad was somebody that they would make fun of all the time. Like, not in a mean way. You know when, like, you just know somebody and they're just such a character, you can't help but make fun of them a little bit, so you and your friends making an inside joke to, like, impersonate them? That was kind of the situation at hand. So he kind of tries to warn Chad a little bit. He goes, hey, man, I actually know her pretty well, and uh, I think she's talking to someone. He tries to avoid the whole, she thinks you're mega cringe, because obviously nobody wants to have to, like, tell somebody that they're insanely cringe that's just not a crazy fun conversation to have obviously and for whatever reason dude instead of being a normal person and going oh okay then I won't Chad goes yeah it doesn't matter I'll be able to get her to like me like he's just it doesn't matter this dude really thought he had what it take to swoop in and get the finesse and you know Tony tries to warn him again he's like nah dude I, I really wouldn't flirt with her and he's like whatever it doesn't matter I'm not gonna flirt with her Instead, what I'm thinking about is the school had a dance coming up, and he was like, I'm going to ask her to the dance. I'm going to have people come into our classroom with balloons. I'm going to have them do, like, this big, huge gesture and ask her to the dance, because even if I haven't talked to her before, it'll put her in a spot where she can't say no. 
And Tony knew her, so obviously he tells him again, he's like, listen, man, she hates being the center of attention. Don't do that. She's not going to like this big gesture in front of the class, I promise you. But you know Chad, just knowing better, figures that he knows exactly what's going to work. So he goes through, spends some of his parents' money on, like, these people that are going to come into his class with a balloon and this big sign asking this girl to the dance. And, you know... Tony is literally telling him, like, every day not to do it. And finally, he lets his friend know what's going to happen. And his friend is like, he does realize I'm going to reject him in front of everyone, right? Like, it doesn't matter if it's a big gesture or not. I understand he thinks it's gonna, like, make me not reject him. I'm still going to say no. It's just going to embarrass him way more to get rejected in front of everybody. And Tony's like, yeah, trust me. I've been telling him that. He just doesn't really seem to care that much. He thinks somehow it's going to work. It was like because mom and dad had never told him no before, he didn't even feel like it not working was a possibility. Ah, this is 100% going to work. It does not matter. So whatever. He's going through with it. He's friend knows. And she is going to reject him. He warns him one more time. And Chad is like, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. You've never asked a girl to a dance before. So just shut up. And at that point, you know, all bets are off. Why would Tony keep talking? If you're going to tell me to shut up and like keep my mouth shut when I'm trying to warn you and save you from embarrassment, then by all means, dude, I feel like you've earned it at that point. You know, if you've done everything in your power to tell him, hey, dude, you're about to embarrass yourself and they just say, shut up, you're stupid, then you're not really that at fault for keeping your mouth shut after that. So obviously he kind of lets him keep planning his thing. And finally, the day comes where he plans to have this big group of people come in, ask her to the dance, all this stuff and i'm not gonna say her name because you know to save from the embarrassment so i'm gonna make one up for her i'm gonna call her alice because you know alice just she's the hero the the city deserved but they didn't know they needed or whatever the batman's saying the day comes sure enough everybody is in class waiting for the moment and tony is just kind of hoping that for whatever reason chad has had a change of heart you know he's decided to back out of this at the last second but Sure enough, in the middle of class, an English class, by the way, where they were writing an essay, so it's dead quiet, everyone is focused on their own work. Literally the worst day you could possibly have people come into class and he cause a huge disruption. Everyone's sitting there quietly writing the essays, and the door just swings open, and it's this group of kids, they're playing Katy Perry on the radio, and they're like, whoa, oh, they're just screaming, they're not even singing along, they're just incoherently screaming, and they walk in holding balloons, and then two of them unfurl this big sign, and it says, like, the dance name, I'm gonna say homecoming, because I don't know what dance it was, they didn't tell me. Alice, will you go to homecoming with me? And it, like, is such a long banner that it takes up the entire class. One ends over by the teacher's desk, the other one's by the door. They have this huge thing of balloons and flowers, and everyone looks over at Alice to see what she's doing, and she is literally, like, hiding inside of her hoodie. You know when they pull their hoodie up, trying to do the creeper hoodie thing where they zip it up, but you don't have the zipper hoodie? So you're just, like, trying to pull it over your head even though it won't go there? She is literally trying to hide because the embarrassment is too strong you know i understand he thought it was a great gesture but some people just don't like to have that stuff going down in public and she didn't even know this dude like they had never talked or flirted before he just thought this would be a great introduction and so he goes up there and then it gets worse the group starts to do like the flash mob thing and i thought those went out of style in 2011 all right it's already bad enough who in their right mind wants to do a flash mob in the year 2021 ladies and gentlemen imagine sitting there going all right we need a coordinated dance number so we can be more like a musical i want to be like cats as much like cats as humanly possible like that was a real thought that they decided to have for some reason so whatever they do this little flash mob dance thing to the song and then finally they're like ah, ba 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 and chad finishes and goes alice will you go to homecoming with me and she is still hiding she didn't watch the dance number she was not really down to you know be involved in any way shape or form and the teacher is like jumping for joy. She thinks it's great. And she goes, Alice, come up here. And so she goes over and kind of like pulls Alice up to the front of the class. And she is literally still hiding. And Tony is just watching this entire thing, like, laughing and also feeling mortified at the same time. Obviously, you're gonna laugh at it, because how can you not? This dude's about to get rejected after committing to learning a flash mob dance. That's just pure hysterity, no matter how you look at it, right? But at the same time, watching your friend get embarrassed on this level has got to be brutal. So, sure enough, they're all up there, and Chad is like, what'd you think? 
And she goes, it was something like that's literally the words that she says. And at that point, the class starts to laugh a little bit because like, you know, they're also thinking the same thing. Like, wow, this is awful. And the fact that she hates it, too, makes it like more okay to laugh at. You know, you would feel bad laughing at it if they both thought it was great. But the fact that she's not interested makes it funnier. And so he starts to get irritated and he's like, wow, you really think it was like not great that I planned this all for you? And she's like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Thank you. But I'm not really a fan of dance numbers or anything. So like it's it's just something. And he starts to get annoyed and Chad's like, are you kidding me? Like I could have asked anyone. And she goes, awesome. Then you won't mind when I say I don't want to go with you. No. And Chad's face like freezes up, bro. It's like almost as if he thought that was magically going to make her go, oh, no, you're right. I should want to go with you because he starts to be like, wait, you're saying no, you're saying no. And everyone in the class starts to laugh again at that point, because how could you not, dude? It was almost like literally the word no could not compute that he had just been rejected. And Chad starts to tear up a bit, but he's doing the thing where like he's trying to act like he's not crying. And he's like, why would you say no? Why would you say no? And Alice decides to point out at that point the very obvious thing, which was, I don't know you. We've never really had a conversation before. I don't like big gestures. I'm really embarrassed by all of this happening right now. Like, no, that that is why I'm saying no. I, I don't know who you are. And he's like, but I planned all this out for you. I did a flash mob. And she goes, the fatality move. Okay, cool. Those were awesome like eight years ago. And that was the kill shot, ladies and gentlemen. At that point, the tears start flowing. He had been holding it back at that point. But he's like, you can't tell me no while he's crying. And at that point, his friends that had come in to like help him ask, like kind of pull him out of the classroom, right? They're kind of like, all right, we got to get you out of here, bro. But he was dramatically, dramatically upset. And as soon as he leaves, everyone in the class just starts, like, hysterically laughing because of how awkward it was to watch that go down, bro. Like, obviously, that would just make any classroom have to laugh. And so everyone's laughing. They hear him and his friends kind of yelling about it outside and walking down the hall. And everybody's just giggling about it. And, you know, I think in in, uh, Chad's mind, he was like, whatever, I got rejected, but I can still save this. But of course, by the time they like get to lunch, everyone and their mom at the school has heard about it because it's not every day somebody like organizes a flash mob just to get rejected, dude. That's something everyone's going to be talking about. It's it's nothing personal. You just got to accept it. And obviously all day people were like making fun of him, dude, doing like little steps of the dance move just to make him upset. And I mean, it was working because that had to hurt. But uh, honestly, I don't really know what he expected. Like, the entitlement to just not know someone at all, assume they're going to love your dance number. Like, it's just all a little much, bro. You know what I'm saying? I will say that definitely probably knocked him down a peg. He didn't really talk to Tony too much after that because, you know, he blamed him a little bit. But he did kind of stop talking about the lifestyle, stop flexing a little bit. It was almost as if he realized that he's not always going to win everything by default. So, you know... I guess that's good. You're still the weird flash mob dude, though. Like, you're always going to have that on your back. That's never going to change. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I would really, really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the video. And if you're new, you might as well subscribe and turn on those notifications I've been posting. Uh, and, you know, you don't want to miss another video. Other than that, if you really want to help me out, you can, of course, check out a link to the intro song down below, along with a link to my podcast, The Scuffed Cast, which is pretty great. Or if you're a fan of G Fuel, the best energy drink for gamers by gamers, ladies and gentlemen, if you're at their website getting yourself some, use code SCRUBBY at the checkout to get a discount and help me out. And last but certainly not least, as y'all know, it is October. Halloween is upon us. And because of that, I made the Halloween merch. It's on your screen now, and as you can tell, it's pretty fantastic. And I'll put a link to that at the top of the description, so go ahead and get that. But uh, on that note, guys, that's everything I gotta plug. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot, and hopefully I will see each and every single one of you guys next time with another video. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot, and I'm out. Peace. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here, back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am, and today I've got a story time for y'all that I think you're going to enjoy about this spoiled kid that stole his mom's jewelry and then gambled it away at school. Wouldn't recommend doing this, but be sure to press the like button or no joke, no scam. Your kid's gonna steal all of your valuables, and you don't want that. And without further ado, let's go. Yeah.
Nice rack in her ass Brazilian just turned 21 but my bank's a million all right, so I guess at this particular school, tetherball was the game that, like, everybody played. You know, if you were uh, going to make yourself an athlete here, tetherball was the game you had to make yourself good at. And naturally, whenever the entire school is playing a game, it, like, becomes insanely popular. You had crowds of kids watching tetherball, you had multiple games going at a time, and naturally, when something got popular and there was winners and losers, people started to, uh, make things a little bit more interesting than just a straight-up match. You know, they would gamble a little bit, and I think that's probably not a good idea. I feel like gambling on tetherball is probably one of the easiest ways to make sure you lose everything you're gambling. But hey, to each their own. They would bet, you know, Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. If somebody had like a homework pass that was on the table, sometimes if people were really crazy, they'd bring real money. But you know, not many of them had it. But there was one kid in particular who was uh, quite a fan of the gambling, and that was this kid named Reggie. And Reggie was an insanely spoiled kid. His parents just had way too much money. They would get him whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. And because of that, he always had just like extra toys, extra stuff to bring to school and, uh, you know, bet on tetherball. And you would think that somebody that's going to bet everything on tetherball would be good at it. They'd practice a lot, maybe because he's a rich kid, he makes his parents like buy him a tetherball court in the backyard so he can practice. You would think that one way or another, if you're constantly gambling at a sport, you would get a little bit good at it. But no, this Reggie kid was basically always losing whenever he would gamble. Like, literally, it got to the point where all the good tetherball players would see him walk up and be like, Hey man, do you want to play? Because they knew that he would bring something that he wouldn't be able to not gamble and lose. This guy was literally basically funding, like, all of these really good tetherball kids, like, lunch money, you know? They would take some Pokemon cards and sell them. And eventually, him gambling on these tetherball games got so bad that he had, like, lost all of his Pokemon cards. He didn't have any of his toys left. He didn't have any money. And, you know, he obviously gets to this point, and this is not a good thing, this is how you know you're addicted to gambling, where he's telling himself that if he just had a little bit more stuff to bet, he could win it all back, because, you know, he's really close to a good luck streak. And obviously, he's begging all these people that he's lost all these Pokemon cards, cards and toys to to play him again, play him again. And at this point, they don't really want to play him again, because they've got everything to lose, there's nothing left to get. So they're like, alright, the only way I'm ever going to play you again and give you a chance to win everything back is if, you know, you make the bet very interesting like you got to bring something to school that we can bet about that you know isn't cheap and listen at this point i gotta say that uh these kids were probably just realizing that this kid would do anything he was addicted to playing tetherball so they weren't exactly the nicest about it you know they didn't have to tell him that he should bring expensive stuff to school but he did anyways they did too so like whatever i'm not in charge of them and listen, you would think at this point, if they're like, I'm only going to keep taking stuff from you if the stuff gets more expensive, you would think, okay, maybe I should stop gambling. Like, if everybody's just telling me that they want me to bring more expensive stuff because I'm so easy to beat, I should just quit. But no, no, of course not. This guy had deluded himself into thinking he had the secret sauce at Tetherball. He'd just been on an insane bad luck streak. So he knows that he can't bring anything cheap. He doesn't have any Pokemon cards or toys left. So he decides that he's going to steal some of his mom's jewelry to gamble. As I said, he's a spoiled kid, so I'm assuming his mom had a lot of jewelry. But, you know, he still decides in his mind that her jewelry is good to take to school and gamble with on a stupid game that no one really cares about. Like, you know, I understand that you might have a gambling problem with Tetherball, bro, but I feel like stealing your mom's jewelry to try to win back your Pokemon cards is just not a very good trade-off here, because what if you lose the jewelry too? Hey mom, listen, I understand that you had a couple necklaces that grandma gave you before she passed away that were insanely valuable and impossible to replace because they were made over a hundred years ago, but I got really into tetherball at school and I lost all my Pokemon cards and they said they were only going to play me for something valuable, so I went ahead and gambled it. Hope that's all good. Like, I don't think your mom's going to be understanding of that, but regardless, he takes some of her jewelry and he decides to take it to school to gamble with. And so he comes to school with two pairs of earrings and two bracelets. Like, it wasn't even like he just took one item to gamble with. He cleared out half the jewelry box to try to make sure that, you know, he was playing tetherball all day tomorrow. 
and he instantly gets to school and starts like showing it to everybody right you know oh look what I brought look what I'm gonna do for tetherball and everybody's like why do you have all these earrings and bracelets dude those look expensive you shouldn't have brought them to school and he's telling everybody that you know well obviously because I lost all my Pokemon cards I needed to bring something to gamble with so this is what I'm going to use to gamble on tetherball and literally people in his class at that point are telling him this is a bad idea they're like dude I would not gamble your mom's jewelry on tetherball that sounds like a bad idea but he doesn't care he's not listening he's like no you guys don't understand I've gotten a lot better I've been practicing there's no way that I'm gonna lose this time the typical stuff you would hear somebody saying if they're definitely about to lose all their mom's jewelry but word spreads around the school pretty quick and all the good tetherball players like the kids that are capable of just destroying him and getting the jewelry they're starting to get excited you know they're getting happy they're like dude I'm about to make some serious money off this guy I'm about to get a diamond bracelet for playing tetherball you know all of their sudden their college fund is gonna get a big bump to it like <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying all the good players that are about to win all this jewelry are starting to get excited and obviously everyone's talking about how he's gonna bet his mom's jewelry and he's an idiot da 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 and finally lunch comes where they have like this long recess period before they go eat where everybody plays tetherball and you know everybody goes out there to the tetherball game everybody's watching because they want to see what this kid does and he comes out sure enough with all the earrings all the bracelets and he's like oh hey guys what's up yeah I brought this stuff to bet on for tetherball but get ready because I've been practicing it's not gonna be easy to beat me today da 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 just kind of hyping himself up and then he starts to get a little overzealous and starts talking crap about how there's no way he can lose like you know I'm betting with my mom's jewelry so that's gonna make me play even harder so there's no way I'm gonna lose and listen if you are now bankrupt because you've gambled everything on tetherball and lost every game I don't know where the sudden burst of confidence is coming from but he's just talking crap to these kids now listen man I'm just saying just because you're betting a bunch of stuff on a game doesn't mean you can't lose that doesn't multiply your skill like some in his mind he's like well you know if I bet all of my mom's jewelry then I have to play better because if I lose it I'll get in trouble yeah that could also backfire and you'll crack under the immense pressure and play worse I'm just saying like I it's probably not a good idea to start acting more confident and talking trash to people when you've got a lot on the line because they don't I also love this idea like a lot of people I've talked to are like this oh man if I bet a bunch of money like I'm super confident just because you're confident doesn't mean it's gonna happen bro it's still gambling I live in Las Vegas every day when I wake up and like go skate around and I see all those giant casinos down there it reminds me that you know gambling's a horrible way to make money if if gambling and casinos were made for you to get rich they wouldn't have 70 billion dollar casinos on a strip of land where they just fleece people for their money I'm just saying man like uh, there's a reason that they say the house always wins chances are you're being overconfident by gambling all your stuff so whatever the first game he decides to play is one of the better kids at tetherball for one of the bracelets keep in mind it's like a diamond bracelet and he's like if you can beat me you get this bracelet and the kid double checks with him he's like are you sure Reggie like you're saying that if I beat you in this game of tetherball that I get that bracelet and he's like yeah if you're willing to pay or play for it not pay for it and obviously the kids like all right that's fine but you're okay with that just to make sure you want me to play you for this bracelet this diamond bracelet you're okay with giving me if I beat you in tetherball and he's like yes and all that confidence man all that trash talk he gets obliterated this kid literally mops the floor with him he doesn't even touch the ball like you know when uh, someone's playing tetherball they just start smacking it it's just spinning around the pole with speed Reggie literally does not even get a hand on the ball and so he loses and he looks pissed but he like reluctantly hands over the bracelet and you think at that point his confidence is shattered but he looks back at him and he goes what about double or nothing and everyone's kind of like <gasps> you know kind of like what is this kid doing and he pulls the other bracelet out of his pocket he's like double or nothing and the kid once again is like dude are you sure like come on you kind of just got slaughtered this bracelet looks like it's expensive are you sure and he doesn't even have to be doing that at this point if the kid is just fleecing him like it Reggie's the one that's being stupid but he's trying to give him a chance and he's like yeah are you afraid are you afraid to play double or nothing I think you're afraid of me huh and so now Reggie's trying to shame this kid say he's 
afraid of him. So he's like, all right, well, I, I guess I'll play you again. Sure. Obviously, if you're going to start screaming at me, calling me a coward for not wanting to take your mom's jewelry, like, I've got to play you now. What else is that kid supposed to do in that situation if someone's just offering you free money and saying you're an idiot for not wanting to take it from them? Like, you've got to, you got to do what you got to do. So they get ready for the second game. It starts. Once again, he just gets absolutely blown out. He does touch the ball this time. Not a whole lot. It doesn't really do anything, but at least he gets his hand on it. And he has to hand over the other bracelet. And so at this point, he's just got the earrings, right? And so everyone is like, dude, stop. Don't gamble the earrings. You've gotten obliterated twice. Seriously, stop. And this is like the crowd of people watching telling him to stop. And I'm just saying, if the crowd of people starts telling you that this is a really bad idea and you shouldn't do it, then you really shouldn't do it. You know what I mean? Because if anything, I feel like a crowd of people watching you are going to want to watch you be an idiot. People are entertained by people making bad decisions. So if the decisions you're making are so bad that even strangers are like, hey, you really shouldn't do that because you're going to regret it, then your decisions have to be really, really, really bad. You know, I've never had a stranger walk up to me and be like, hey, don't drink that water, man. Like, drinking water's bad for you. But this crowd is telling him, stop gambling your mom's jewelry, stop it. But instead of taking the warning of the crowd into consideration, he just decides that, you know, he's going to double down. He knows better. So he looks at the best tetherball player that's not playing, and he goes, all or nothing. You get all the earrings if you can beat me. And so everyone's like oh my god you're an idiot the kid with the two bracelets leaves he's like fine whatever and now the kid who's really good at tetherball looks at him and says once again like are you sure are you sure you want to gamble the rest of this stuff that you took for your mom on a tetherball game with me and this kid had just never lost before by the way like period not to this guy not to anyone so if you're gonna pick anyone to play for the rest of your mom's expensive jewelry this is the worst person to pick but sure enough, Reggie's like, yeah, I don't know why everybody thinks I'm an idiot. I know what I brought to the table. I brought this expensive stuff because I'm confident in my abilities. So if you're going to be a little pansy and not play me, then that's on you. But I want to play. And so this like kid who's great at Foursquare obviously is like, fine, if you insist on playing me and losing, then I guess that's what we can do. So they start to play, and this guy, who's way better than the other dude he just played to obliterate him, destroys him in like three seconds again. So this guy's played three games, he's touched the ball once in all three of them, and he's now lost all of his mom's jewelry. So, sure enough, the kid who's really good at tetherball goes over there and like takes the jewelry from him because he agreed to gamble it, and he hands it over, he doesn't make a fuss about it, but he doesn't say anything. Like, he's just kind of sitting there with this thousand-yard stare in his eyes, and he's silent, and finally, I think the reality of what he just did starts to hit him because he's just like crying now right he's like what did I do what did I do and everybody's just kind of sitting there watching this happen but the two kids that have won they have the jewelry now this kid's like you know oh why did I gamble my mom's jewelry so they're standing there they don't really know what to do because they asked this kid multiple times like are you sure and he kept saying he wanted to so they just decide to walk away they're like look I'm not gonna do with this I'm out so they start leaving and when they start leaving Reggie sees that like they're leaving and they're not gonna give him back the jewelry because that's not how gambling works it, like he, <laughs> I, I don't think you can just go guys listen I thought I was gonna win when I bet that so now that I lost can I have it back you know that's not how it works but he's upset he probably realizes how much trouble he's gonna get in so he does the worst possible move you can do in this situation and he decides to go tell the teacher about what had happened and so he goes to a teacher crying about how they took his jewelry for tetherball and he, he bet it but he didn't know that they were gonna keep it and his mom's gonna be mad and obviously this teacher is sitting here listening to this kind of in shock because they don't know any of this is going on they just thought everybody's really into tetherball and here's Reggie like blowing the whistle on this whole gambling ring thing so obviously this teacher has to put an end to it they can't just let that kid continue to go on. So the teacher, you know, rounds up all the kids. Everybody that was involved with watching the game being there gets pulled into the principal's office and questioned. They end up finding out who the kid bet the jewelry against and, you know, rounding them up. 
And the entire time, all these kids go like, yeah, okay, whatever. We know we shouldn't have done it, but <laughs> Reggie did this to himself. No one took the jewelry from him. No one forced him to play. He was the one that wanted to do it. And all the teachers and principals are like, yeah, okay, we understand that he wanted to do it, but it doesn't matter. They make the kids that won the jewelry give it back, which I, I, isn't unfair, because obviously Reggie's an idiot for taking it in the first place. But at least they didn't get in trouble. If giving it back's the extent of their punishment, then that's fine. But if they got, like, suspended because because Reggie gambled with them. It's not their fault that he was like, no, I'm willing to lose all my mom's stuff. They had nothing to do with it, so they get the jewelry back, but at that point, Reggie is in the clear with his parents, but I don't think he thought through the fact that it was gonna make everybody else at the school think of him as a snitch and not like him anymore. Because now everybody's just like, dude, screw you. You're the one that made this big deal about how you were going to bet all of this jewelry, you know, and you didn't care. And then you lost it because you suck. And once you lost, then you start tattling on everybody. You get the entire tetherball game shut down. Because obviously one of the things that they had to do to shut down this gambling ring was like literally get rid of all the tetherballs. They just got rid of them all so that way it wasn't going to be a problem. So this school that had like loved tetherball, that's what they would do at recess, it's what everybody would talk about, gets it taken away because this guy just can't handle the fact that like he lost his mom's jewelry of his own accord. And yes, he gets it back. His mom didn't actually lose anything, but like no one wants to hang out with the dude that's going to snitch on them the second that they lose or something doesn't go the way that they like. No, you guys don't understand. And gambling's only really fun if I win. That's what the rules are supposed to be. You guys don't get it. It's not fun if I'm not winning. And what made it even worse is it wasn't like he was apologetic, you know? He didn't feel bad at all. He thought they were being ridiculous, like, for not wanting to forgive him for what happened. I don't understand why you guys are mad at me. We shouldn't have been gambling in the first place. Like, if anything, it's good that the teachers came and shut it down, because it was a bad example to us. And everyone's like, all right, dude, whatever. It's a bad example to us. But if it was such a bad example and you knew it was so bad, then why were you always gambling? Like, it's insane that everybody else had no issue with it, and then you show up lose all your Pokemon cards, lose all your mom's jewelry, and now you're just so glad that they shut it down. Oh yeah, man, it was just so bad. That's why you were constantly doing it. You clearly didn't care until you were losing. That's what's really annoying. And let's be honest, if he would have bet all that jewelry, all those bracelets, all those earrings in one, and like won back all of his Pokemon cards and everything else, right? Which was his goal. We all know he wouldn't have tattled then. There's no way this kid wins back all of his Pokemon cards and then still goes to the teacher and says, I won all this stuff gambling and I feel really bad and I think you should take it away and give it back to the people I took it from. You know, those rules only apply when he loses his mom's jewelry, right? Like, <laughs> if he would have stolen everyone else's Pokemon cards, we all know this dude would have been like, eh, too bad, so sad, deal with it, I've got your blast toys, and if you don't stop, I'm gonna flush it down the toilet. And the reason that Reggie acted this way kind of had to deal with his parents, because, you know, obviously the parents ended up getting involved when they discover this little gambling ring. They have to call his mom to explain that her jewelry's at the school, all that stuff. But his parents were more mad at the other kids at the school, apparently. You know, they weren't mad at their son for taking the jewelry or losing all of his Pokemon cards or anything like that. They thought that the rest of the school was guilty of quote-unquote taking advantage of his wealth, which I, I think is just a little ridiculous, dude. Because listen, it's not like they were robbing him. If they were just stealing his lunch money, then yeah, I agree with you. They're taking advantage of the fact this kid's got money. But if your son is willfully going to the tetherball court and saying, I'm going to beat you, and if I don't win, then you get this Pokemon card, and he never wins, and he just keeps doing it, that's kind of on him. Like what, you expect everybody else in the school not to notice that your kid is just offering them free money? Like if there was a broken ATM spewing out $100 bills, you wouldn't go take a few? I, I love that people would pretend they wouldn't, but let's be honest, if tomorrow a fire hydrant breaks and it's shooting out money instead of water, we're all taking a little bit, okay? And you're also glossing over the fact that, you know, your kid took the jewelry. Like, they didn't tell him, hey man, bring your mom's necklace in and give it to me, or bring your mom's bracelet in and give it to me. They never said that. That was his idea, dude. But on the bright side, at least it's not as bad as losing your 401k, you know? Your mom's 401k. We have had story times on this channel about people doing worse to their moms, so all things considered, I guess, stealing your mom's jewelry isn't that bad, which is insane to hear. Still don't do it. Never, never, ever do it. But compared to blowing an entire retirement fund, this is on the low scale of things. Seriously, though, I would recommend not making everybody hate you by ruining anything fun at your school. If you suck at a sport, just don't bet all your money on it. It's really that simple.
I will say, though, you never know what's next. After tetherball, they might switch to kickball, and this kid's going to steal the engagement ring and bet that on a kickball game instead. You just never know. Be careful out there, dude. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I would really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. Or, of course, subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications. If you don't know what to comment, like I said, the word tetherball would really help the video hit recommended. Other than that, if you want to help me out, you can check out the intro song linked down below, along with a link to my podcast, The Scuffed Cast, or you could use code SCRUBBY at the G Fuel checkout. You get a discount on G Fuel. It helps me out. Everyone's a winner. And last but certainly not least, I did go ahead and put some of my story times up on Spotify. Y'all have been asking for me to do that, so I went ahead and did it. So feel free to check that out. Link will be in the top of the description. And uh, yeah, on that note, guys, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And hopefully I will see each and every single one of you guys next time with another video. I'm out. Peace. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a story time for y'all that I think you guys are going to enjoy. It was sent in to me about a uh, spoiled kid that ended up taking spoiled way further than I've ever seen anyone take it before by uh, deciding that because he didn't want to spend his va summer vacation at a lake house, he should just burn it down. Yeah, honestly, I didn't really know what to think either. Regardless, I figured it'd make a good video, so that's what we're going to be doing today. But before we get into it, be sure to press the like button or no joke, no scam whatsoever. You're going to meet someone this spoiled, and trust me, you don't want that to happen. And uh, yeah, let's go. Nice rack in her ass Brazilian just turned 21 but my bank's a million swear all right, so I think everybody has met a spoiled kid that can act a little bit entitled, you know, take things a little bit too far, but very rarely does someone become so entitled they end up, like, burning down their own property, and as much as I uh, wish that was not the case, that's what today's story time's about, you know. As I said, this is a subscriber story that was sent in about a former family friend of theirs that, like, hated this cabin, so they uh, lit it on fire to prevent staying in it, which is pretty stupid. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, the person that sent this in to me comes from a family that's doing pretty solid, and they have a cabin on a lake up north in the state that they're from. And the town that their cabin is in isn't huge, and, you know, because of that, whenever they go spend time there in the summer, they get pretty close to, like, everyone around them. And the neighbor of the subscriber's cabin was, you know, a family that was doing incredibly well for themselves. They owned, like, half the lake. They had a few different houses and stuff along the shore, but the biggest one that they owned and the one that they lived in was next door to his family's cabin. And obviously, when you have to explain which lake house you own by which of the multiple lake houses you own is the biggest you know that like the family's in a position where their kids might be pretty spoiled and usually when the kids are really spoiled it means the parents suck too but the parents in this case were actually pretty down to earth and usually chill and so because the parents were chill they became friends with his parents and you know once your parents are friends you're just kind of forced to hang out with their kid it is what it is there's not too much you can really do about it so they would just be forced to hang out on boats sometimes, like hang out together when their parents were talking around the fire, that type of stuff. And they had a kid that we're going to call Reginald, who was just the definition of a fun-killing spoiled brat. Reginald was the type of guy who just complained about everything and hated when anyone had the nerve to, like, have fun or enjoy anything. Like, one time, they had decided to go tubing out on the lake, so all the families get onto this boat and start tubing, and the entire time, Reginald is just whining because, and I'm not kidding, he said that the tube looked like a donut, and it was going to make him cheat on his diet that he had to do for the lacrosse season, and it was making him upset. And he just would not let it go, to the point where, like, he seriously ruined everyone's day because some inanimate object reminded him of a donut too much, which, you know, is just honestly Homer Simpson behavior. And it wasn't even like he just whined a few times either. He took ruining the day so far that, like, when everyone was trying to ignore him and just keep tubing, he took a pocket knife and poked a hole in the tube. Yeah, that's right. If I don't want to look at this tube because it looks like a donut, then literally no one should be able to go tubing. In his head, I guess it just made more sense to ruin tubing for everyone since it reminded him of a donut. You know, just insanely selfish. But what's crazy is, though, most of the time his parents were super chill, everyone got really mad at him for stabbing the tube, so that way nobody could use it. But his parents were, like, being really, really way too nice about it, you know? I don't know if you know what I mean, but, like, if you've ever seen a parent try to do this 
when they take way too reasonable of an approach with their kid when he's just a jerk. Like, whatever their kid just did, keep in mind Reginald is a teenager at this point, whatever they just did is probably worth getting yelled at, you know, but his parents just start trying to, like, ask how he's feeling. Keep in mind, these are teenagers, not toddlers. They're perfectly capable of saying how they feel without just, like, stabbing a hole in the inner tube. But he starts explaining to his parents that he was just feeling sad because nobody cared about the fact that it was reminding him of a donut, which, you know, is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Because obviously nobody cares that an inner tube reminds you of a donut. What did you want them to do? Like, sound the alarm, dude? Call in the Coast Guard and be like, alert, alert, no more tubes on the lake ever because my son says they look like donuts. You gotta get over it, man. Like, that made you so upset. People ignoring the stupidest complaint of all time made you so upset that you poked a hole in the tube instead. But for some reason, dude, his parents just eat that up hook, line, and sinker. So they just decide that they're gonna go home and talk about his emotions with him and they're telling him that it's okay and, you know, as long as he knows that it was wrong, then it's all right. Keep in mind, this is like a, a 15, 16-year-old that they're saying, no, it's okay that you just poked a hole in someone else's inner tube because, you know, your emotions. I get emotions happen, but it doesn't mean you can just be, like, running around breaking other people's stuff. I'm pretty sure that's called vandalism. And the parents, because they're doing well, just ended up giving the people on the boat some money to pay for another tube, and, like, you know, they told him it was okay and not to win. And so after that, he kind of had this attitude that, like, oh, I can do whatever I want, and my parents are always just gonna let me do it and that's not necessarily good now listen I personally have never owned a lake house you know maybe one day when I'm an old man I'll get one but uh that being said I don't know what it's like to own one that being said that being said once again uh, I don't know why Reginald seems to hate spending time at a lake house so much Never owned one, never been to one, but I feel like if I had a nice house on a lake somewhere, I would think it's pretty sick. I don't think I'd be complaining about it, but like, for some reason, Reginald despised spending time at this lake house. Personally, like I say, if my parents had a dope lake house, I think I would have enjoyed it, but he just hated being outdoors. Like, any time they would be out on the lake if he wasn't trying to ruin things like tubing. He was just basically sprinting inside as fast as possible. Like, you know, just any type of dirt, any bug, any type of uh, outside interaction just scared him to the point where he would run inside and stay there. He literally thought that leaves were disgusting and that, like, any type of nature that was growing was dirty and gross. And the perfect example of this is, like, one time they were just kind of sitting out under the fire, and obviously leaves fall off trees sometimes, and a leaf fell and landed on Reginald's head, and he literally acted like he was JFK in the back of a limo, dude. He fell to the ground and just started screaming about how, like, oh my gosh, it touched me, it touched me, I'm gonna be contaminated, I'm gonna get the plague, I'm gonna get the plague because the leaf touched me. And so, obviously, all the parents come rushing over because they think this kid's, like, dying. On the way over there, they're probably, like, like, oh my god, a bear's attacking our kids, you know, who knows what you're thinking when your kid's screaming he's gonna die. So they run over and they realize that he's just screaming about a leaf. So his parents ask him, like, why did you react that way? And he said that, you know, leaves are gross because they've touched air that other people have breathed, so he doesn't want that on him. Oh yeah, other people's air, dude. Like, do you think that the air in the cabin is just yours? No one else has ever breathed it in any way, shape, or form before? Chances are, every little breath we take, ready? Inhale, exhale, has a little bit of dinosaur fart in it. It's just a fact that, like, you know, we only have so much air on the Earth, so it's been recycled a couple times. You just gotta get used to it. Anyways, he just is not having any of the parents telling him it's not a big deal, and he starts screaming at his mom and dad that he hates it here because he has to be outside all the time, and it's disgusting that he's expected to have fun outside. And instead of just telling him to get over it because nature is everywhere and he can't handle a leaf, they just decide to pack up and leave early, like go back home home to not the lake, their other houses. That's how spoiled this dude was, bro. Like his parents would just cave to him at every single turn. And because of that, whenever they left early, the subscriber was obviously pretty happy that he didn't have to deal with that. As you can imagine, you know, like getting along with someone acting like that is insanely hard already, but on top of that, he's like bossy, rude, just not very fun to spend time with. And after they left early, it was a really great summer. But by the next summer, Reginald had turned 16, and obviously, as soon as he turned 16, because his parents liked to spoil him, they ended up getting him a car. And he would drive his car to and from school. It's not really important right now, but it will be later. And next summer was approaching, and I guess Reginald had decided that he was going to go to Cabo with his friends and spend the entire summer there. 
And his parents, you know, kind of kibosh that idea pretty quickly. You really can't let a 16-year-old just, like, go live in another country for three months. But I guess he decided that he just was not going to be spending any more time at the cabin. It was too disgusting, all right, he had to touch too many leaves, there was just no way he was going to do another summer of that. But, you know, the only problem with his logic here is that Cabo has leaves too. Like, nature doesn't just disappear, you know what I mean? If you go to another country, there's still going to be nature, bro, because trees are kind of the things that give us oxygen. Anyways, I guess he decides that the best way to make sure that he doesn't have to spend another summer at the lake house was to not have it there anymore because he's going to burn it down. So, a few weeks before summer was going to start, Reginald drives down to his family's property on the lake, goes to the main house they're staying in. I guess they had a bunch of houses on the lake, but the other ones were like rentals, so they had already been booked. So, you know, if this house wasn't in working condition, they like had to go somewhere else. And this man attempts to set the cabin on fire, attempts, by pouring gas around the front door and then lighting it on fire, thinking the entire thing's gonna burn down. Well, obviously, his parents had, like, kinda realized that cabins can catch on fire sometimes, so they had had a sprinkler system in. So the door catches on fire, some of the entryway burns, but the sprinkler system kicks in and it doesn't really burn anything down. They also had an alarm because it's a nice house, so as soon as, like, the smoke detector starts going off, the fire department starts coming. And the fire department comes, and they get there, and this moron Reginald is still trying to light the house on fire. But because the gasoline didn't work, he's standing in the kitchen with, like, a Bic lighter, like a cigarette lighter, trying to light the countertop on fire. Because, you know, in his mind, he's like, oh, the gasoline didn't work, so I guess this lighter will, you know, somehow make the kitchen burst into flames even faster. Like, you know, oh, the gasoline didn't work, I'm gonna get the entire kitchen to burst into flames real quick. Anyways, the fire department gets him, tells him to stop, stop him, get the cops, cops call the parents, it's a whole shebang, because obviously they have to report that this kid is, like, trying to burn down the cabin. Anyways, they call the parents, and the parents come, and they're like, all right, well, you know, it's an accident. It's an accident. You know, I'm not too sure how it was an accident, but it's their house, and they kind of explain that, like, obviously, this was an accident, officers. This is, uh, simply he spilled the gasoline all over the front door while trying to go fill up his car with gas. That's what happened here. Obviously, they don't want him to get in trouble, but, like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really understand. And they put this thing like mega mega under wraps basically nobody ends up finding out about it everybody knows that there was a fire at that house but like they make sure that everybody is uh, a little bit not sworn to secrecy but you know they might have had a little bit of uh, I have a lot of uh, houses on this lake please keep this a secret my son's a good kid little bit of a situation you know you know how those people tend to do those things and so the only reason that, like, you know, the subscriber ends up finding out about this is the parents one night are, like, having a talk about it because they were going to plan some stuff for that summer. And, you know, they're talking about it, and that's when the rich kid's parents end up explaining to the subscriber's parents that they're not going to be there, and they say the entire story about how Reginald, you know, just wants to spend time in Cabo and blah, 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 and he lit the house on fire. And they kind of just gloss over that like it's no big deal, and obviously his parents ask some questions, and they tell him the entire story, and they can't believe it. And this is already wild enough, right? You're like, damn, Reginald's really lighting his own houses on fire because he doesn't want to spend time at his lake house. This is already nuts. But what do they do instead that summer, instead of going to the lake house? You would think they'd, like, send him to military school, maybe, or, like, they would spend the summer hiking through the Appalachian Trail so he can learn a little bit of gratitude or something like that. But no, no, no. Instead, they decide that they're going to spend the entire summer in Cabo because they wouldn't want him to miss out on spending time with his friends. So basically, this dude got what he wanted anyways. Like, as weird as it is, he goes, I'll light this house on fire. We won't be able to stay there this summer while it's getting fixed and we'll end up in Cabo. And instead of his parents being like, yeah, you idiot, that's not going to work, somehow it just worked and he got to spend the summer in Cabo? No wonder this dude was acting absolutely insane if, like, his entire family is insane too and they're just letting him do that, man. Like, oh, son, I know that you did this and you did it so that way we would go there. So, as punishment, we're going to do what you wanted us to do the entire time. That's definitely going to teach him a lesson, man. I just can't believe that they also called it an accident. Like, oh, he accidentally, he slipped and fell and spilt gallons of gasoline and then accidentally lit it on fire. 
But to make matters even worse, you would think that, like, Reginald would keep that on the down low. you think he wouldn't be, like, very braggy about it. But apparently, according to, like, mutual friends that they had, you know, people that knew him, he basically tells everybody about how, you know, he tricked his parents into spending the summer in Cabo because da-da-da-da-da, and he flexes what he did. Which means, like, yo, he kind of considers this a win in his head. On the bright side, at least he tells people about it so you know right away that, like, you don't really want to invite this guy over to your house. Maybe it's just me, but if somebody just meets me and they start telling me the story of the time they burnt their vacation home down, I just make a mental note of, like, alright, do not want this guy in my house. Didn't even regret it, just felt like it was worth it so he could go to Cabo, baby. That's what matters, I guess. Anyways, guys, I think that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. And of course, subscribe if you're new and turn on those notifications. If you want to help me out more, a link to the intro song can be found down below along with a link to my podcast, The Scuffed Cast. And of course, you could use code SCRUBBY at the G Fuel checkout. Great way to get a discount on the best energy drink for gamers by gamers. Other than that, it's Halloween, so you can get the Halloween merch. A link will be found at the in the description, at the in the description. That's right, English. But you guys should definitely go get yourself some. And uh, yeah, on that note, I think that's everything I got to plug. Be sure to not get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And hopefully I will see each and every single one of you guys time, uh, one of you guys next time with another video. I can't talk right now. I'm really sorry. I got to go. Bye. Peace.